the Inland Empire's home for NASCAR. Fox Sports 1350. KTDD. Now live from Etiwanda High School, located in Rancho Cucamonga, it's Coach B, Andy Turner with Fox Sports 1350, High School Game of the Week. All right, coming to you from the brand new Etiwanda Eagle Stadium, located on the campus of Etiwanda High School in Rancho Cucamonga, is tonight Fox Sports 1350 Game of the Week. Oh, along with my IE Sportsnet co-host, Etiwanda is taking on the Oak Hill Bulldogs. We got a little late start tonight. Oak Hill, they won the toss, they deferred, and they kicked the ball off, and we're ready to start some football. Back to field the ball for your Etiwanda Eagles. I know there was Porter back there, and then we also had we had Porter, and we had uh, – It was number 82 and number uh, – don't give me the line, Coach. I know it was Porter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, but we are excited. We're back again in this great stadium, great facility, right here next to the two fi- I mean, the 15 freeway, Coach B. They're in the spread formation. They're ready to go. McDonald is in the backfield. He hands off to 21, Lawrence Stark. It was a, a run. It was a dive right up the middle and right off the back. He goes ahead and picks up eight yards on the first play. You can't beat that on your first play. Guarantee. And, and Coach B, we're going to see this. Uh, you know, I talked to Coach Davis a little bit before the game, and we're going to see a lot of starts. Second and three, they're going fast. They're back in the spread. It's a sweep to the right. Lawrence Stark, he picks up. It looks like he picked up about three yards with 11 minutes and 32 seconds to go. First quarter, like we said, we're live with Etiwanda Eagle Stadium. Oh, my God, is this facility beautiful? Man, really, really nice. Uh, and again, you know, like I said, you know, I talked about this for the last couple of weeks. The ambience, man, you, get, you know, you see the 15 freeway, 210 freeway. It's a really nice facility. They got trips lot left. McDonald's in the gun. He has two receivers to the right. There's a first set of laundry on the field. There's both starts on the Etiwanda Eagles. And like we said, we got a little bit of an early start. They love to start things right on time here at Etiwanda. For tonight's matchup, like we said, head coach Artie Allen and the Oak Hill Bulldogs come to town to take on. Coach Davis, Coach Kevin Davis, and the Etiwanda Eagles in Etiwanda's homecoming game. Yes, we'll it talk is. about last game, uh, last year's game. But once again, they have trips on your left, two receivers to your right. McDonald's in the backfield. He takes a direct snap on first and fifteen, and there's some more laundry on the field. So we've uh, we're only it's eleven minutes and six seconds to go in the first quarter, and we've already had two penalties. Now tell me a little bit, Eternal, about last year's. Uh, homecoming game. It was a nail biter last year. Yes, it was, and it happened to be, uh, you know, the opposite effect was happening. You know, again, I got a chance to talk to Coach Davis about it. Uh, last year was Oak Hill's homecoming. Etiwanda Eagles came in there ready to go, and Oak Hill at that time kind of had some momentum, and they thought they were going to get this game. And uh, 31 to 30, Etiwanda was able to squeak that win out. So you can best believe. The Bulldogs took the trip up the freeway to try to get some revenge. And that was a costly penalty. Etiwanda is the beneficiary. They got a 15-yard penalty. They have to spot those chains before they can start. But they went ahead and started. McDonald's in the backfield. He drops back, and he tries to complete the pass. He throws to number 15 for the Etiwanda Eagles, and that's going to be Hunter Black. It was incomplete. It was, it was interesting because the chains weren't even set, but our guy Tommy McDonald was ready to go. Yeah, they had Jack Campbell on the pressure, outside senior outside linebacker. He was able to get through there and made him throw that ball a little faster than he wanted to. Absolutely. And once again, we have a spread formation, two receivers right, one left. You have Starks in the backfield. Is that handoff to Starks? He dances in the backfield. He was a 5, 10. He picks up 15 yards. And the best thing about that play, Eternal, is at the end, he showed the defensive back that he can deliver the wood as well. Yeah, and he got some different shoes on, uh, Coach B. He, you know, last week he had on the gold tiptoes. Today he got on the goal. I mean the silvers. Let's see if he can. Let's see if he can still have a goal performance uh, because you know he obviously the man wants to look good for every game. And I, I tell you, Tommy McDonald, he's ready to go. The chains are, are just getting set, and they're at the thirty. They're at Whoa. they're at the thirty yard line for Oak Hill, and Lawrence starts to get stopped in the backfield on that first down play. So it looks like they lost about five yards. The ball is now spotted at Oak Hill's. 35-yard line, but Tommy's ready to go. He has two receivers right, two left in the shotgun. It is a direct snap. He, he takes the draw. He gets five. It looks like he picked up about 10 yards, but there's more laundry on the field in the first quarter with 10 minutes, 23 seconds to go. There's already been three penalties in the game, and I know Coach Coach uh, Davis can't be happy about this. Yeah, hey, Co- and Coach B, I, I can tell you already, a player that we want to make sure we keep our eyes on, because he's already been on almost every tackle, is number six for uh, Oak Hills. It uh, looks like uh, Vicelius Phelps, or Phipps, he's a guard, he's a junior, 6'1", 285, Coach B, and he's putting a lot of pressure on O'Donnell. 
And that was a penalty on Etiwanda, and that is a costly penalty. It was about a 15-yard penalty. And once again, Tommy McDonald is in the gun. The ball is spotted at Oak Hill's 45. He has two receivers left, one left. He runs a sweep to 21. Lawrence starts. He picks up. He gets to the edge. Five yards. Ten yards. Fifteen yards. So he just picks up the 15 yards on that second down play. He picked up the 15 yards that Etiwanda lost on that. That was a strong run by a junior running back who has still another year of high school eligibility. Yeah, Allen Jordan on the tackle for uh, Oak Hills football. And, again, Co- uh, Starks makes a living out of breaking tackles and making guys miss. One guy doesn't take that hit and take him down. No, he and, and again, Coach B, he's really been able to keep doing that. We've seen it for two weeks now. Now, once again, when it's spread formation, two receivers right, one receiver left, you have uh, McDonald. In, it, it, it's a reverse to number 82, Jordan Porter. He, he takes a hit to the leg. He gets up, and they lose about 10 yards on that play. Etiwanda is the home team, so tonight they have their traditional home uniforms, black jerseys with the gold numerals and trim, red pants. Oak Hill has the clean white top and bottom trimmed in red. So hey, that – go ahead. That was Hosea Stokes, freshman – Safety on the tackle, Coach B, went up there, was not fought on the end of round play. That was a big third down play at a loss, so now the ball is spotted at Oak Hills 38, so they're, they're about fourth down and about 18. McDonald is still in the game, so it looks like they're going to go for this. They have trips right, one receiver, or two receivers on your left, so empty backfield. So we're going to see if they're going to, and they do stuff, it's a pooch punch. So he punched the ball right up, and the ball bounces at the 30, takes a backward Oak Hill bounce at number 70, makes a very, very smart play, and he decided to go ahead and catch that ball. And number 70 is Alex Anderson. And, so, Coach, and Coach B, I tell you what, when I talked to Coach Davis uh, before the game, he let me know, hey, Starks is our guy. We, but when we start, you're going to see Starks get a lot of – he's going to get a lot of opportunities to show the Oak Hill Bulldogs that the Edwin the Eagles came here to play some football tonight. Yes, absolutely. So Oak Hill is coming out, and they're ready to play. So they're trotting on the field. They have their offense coming out. Their quarterback for Oak Hill, that's going to be number 14. He is ready to play some football. And let's see. You know, Oak Hill, is, they're coming off a big win last week, but they have a power formation. They have a couple of receivers in the back, and they run a sweep to number 25, and number 25 makes a good run for them, and that's 25, Amirez Alrich. Yeah, we had uh, Alex, uh, you know, I'm going to call him Alex. He's a <laughs> sophomore, number uh, 58, came up, and he was the one that actually caused the, the chaos out there, Coach B, made the running back go inside so all the Eagles could come up and make that. It looked like about roughly about a two-yard loss, maybe a yard loss. So we're second down at about 12. The ball is started at Oak Hill's own 28-yard line. They have a power formation. They have a, re- a receiver goes in motion, two receivers right, a receiver in the shotgun. Once again, 25. He does a sweep right. He goes five yards. That was a big run for him. He goes five, 10, 15 yards, and he picks up the first down for them. And number 25 is their running back. That's uh, Armis Aldridge. And he had a really, really good run on that play. So he gets the ball spotted at about Oak Hill's own 45-yard line. First and 10, and there are 8 minutes, 13 seconds to go. We're still 0-0, Etiwanda versus Oak Hill live from Etiwanda Eagle Stadium on Fox Sports 1350. And we have two receivers left. You have a tight end on your right, more like an H-back, and you have the uh, your quarterback in the gun. He hands off this time. Running back number 25 gets flat out blasted at the line of scrimmage, and the quarterback is Michael Delgado. And that's... And, Coach Lee, that's number uh, uh, 56, I mean, number 58, Alex. Uh, you know, again, a senior defensive lineman, 5'11", 185, again, on the tackle, being very disruptive for the Etiwanda Eagles out there on the defensive side, Coach B. Etiwanda's defense has got to be pretty happy. They're pushing them back on second down. and second down at about 12 yards to go. The ball is spotted at about the 42-yard line. So they're pushing them backwards. So Etiwanda's defense is stepping up in this big game, still 0-0. So once again, their quarterback, number 14, that's going to be Michael Delgado. He sends a receiver in motion. He's in the gun. He has two receivers to the left. He does a quick sweep play. He, he tosses out to the receiver. That's, that's kind of your West Coast offense where you use the pass as a run. The quarterback sprints out. He sweeps to the right. It looks like it could be a run, but he does a pitch and catch to his receiver, and that's going to be Alan Jordan a wide receiver, a junior 6'2", 190 pounds for the Oak Hill Bulldogs. And, Coach B, when I talked to Coach Davis, he let me know, but you're going to see a lot of similarities from both sides. Mm-hmm. He said they're going to run the no huddle, we're going to run the no huddle. One of the differences, he said, they're going to, they're gonna, you know, the Bulldogs are going to sweep out the running backs in motion a lot. 
So no yards really on that play. You're looking at third and 12, 6 minutes, 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. The quarterback pump fake. He doesn't oh, see wow. so he decides to run. He goes 5, 10, 15, 20 yards. 22, 23 yards. He didn't see anything downfield. He pumped fake because that was definitely a pass play. And since the quarterback didn't even see anything, he went ahead and tucked the ball and he ran for it. So Michael Delgado is showing up. He's a sophomore. He's a 5'10 sophomore who's showing up and having a big game tonight. And, you know, what I did like to see, what I saw on that, the defensive end, he jumped that pass play. However, he left that gap open right there for Delgado to make a run through. So more laundry on the field. It looks like that may be encroachment because typically you see that before the ball is snapped. So the ball now is spotted on they're in Etiwanda's territory now, so they're looking like they're at the 34-yard line, and they're going to start marching that ball even closer down into Etiwanda's territory. So you're looking at a first and five, six minutes, seven seconds to go, first quarter from Etiwanda Eagles Stadium as the Etiwanda Eagles take on the Oak Hills Bulldogs. Of course, still 0-0, but they are working. You have two receivers to your right, your quarterback in the backfield, he hands the ball off once again. And that was a strong run. We have a new running back in the backfield. That's going to be number seven, jo- uh, Griffin. Joseph Griffin. And that was a sweet right, right off the tackle. And that was a good play. It looks like they picked up. Looks like they, uh, there's some more laundry on the field. It's another penalty against Edwanda. I coach, know Coach Davis won't be happy about this. Indeed. And what I talked to uh, Coach Artie Allen about before the game, he let me know they're going to go two running backs. The, the bulk of the carries is going to go to their downhill runner, who was Aldridge, number 25, senior running back. However, you're also going to see a lot of Griffin, number seven. He is their, like, their spellback, and he's a senior as well, so we should see a lot of action out of both of those guys today. So first and ten from the 12-yard line. They're deep in Etiwanda's territory. They're in the red zone. You have two receivers right, one receiver, like an ace back to your left, and you have a running back in the backfield. The running back goes in motion. It's a jet three. The quarterback keeps it, and he goes ahead. He, someone lost their helmet out there. So the quarterback picked up about five yards on that play, and I tell you right now, for Vincent Delgado to uh, I'm sorry, Michael Delgado, to be a freshman or sophomore, he's really stepping up and he's playing some big football. You took the word right out of my mouth. I was going to tell you, for a sophomore quarterback, playing poised, you don't see him shook. The moment's not getting too big for him at all. Second and five, five minutes, 27 seconds to go. First quarter, Etiwanda Eagles Stadium, Eagles versus the Oak Hill Bulldogs. It is sweet to number seven, and he gets in. He picks up about five yards. It was a nice little stretch play, and that's going to be Joseph Griffin. He is knocking on the end zone, so it's going to be third and about. So they picked up the first down. That was enough, so it's first and goal from the two-yard line. So you have four cracks to get into that end zone. And, and Coach B, they're literally about a chin, strap, a chin strap away from the end zone. So, you know, you're going to have to see the Eagles really put. And one of the things that Coach Davis was concerned about is Oak Hill size up front on the offensive line, Coach B. Right, right. So they're set up once again in a power four. They, they brought in the big boys. So they've got a fullback in the backfield. They've got a receiver to the right, and they've got the flea blocker. So number seven runs a dive play right up the gut, and that's Joseph Griffin. He hands the, the handoff was from quarterback number 14, Michael Delgado. So they went right in, right off tackle. Yeah, and, and I, I don't know what the delay was with the referees. We were, we're at least about a good 1,000 feet away, and we saw that. So, uh, But, again, it, they, what I saw there, Coach B, a huge gap in the middle. I mean, no, uh, you know, there is no resistance whatsoever by the Etiwanda Eagles. So, that, you know, Coach Davis, I'm certain, is going to talk to him about that. But, again, he, t- he talked to me about that a little bit uh, in the pregame. The size up front is going to be an issue. And they're – Set for the extra point, and the extra point kicker is going to be up, and he is ready to go ahead and kick that extra point, and that is going to be up, and it is good. So for the extra point, number 13 is Kevin Davis. Go we'll figure that. Isn't that something that's right? So their <laughs> extra point kicker name is Kevin Davis. I'm so certain Coach Davis wouldn't let his boy go to Oak Hill. <laughs> maybe maybe Kevin, uh, Kevin Davis from Oak Hill has a future in, in coaching. In coaching, indeed. So with five minutes to go from the first quarter from Etiwanda Eagle Stadium, Oak Hill is first on the board. So they, they scored a touchdown. It was a power run off the tackle. Number seven for Oak Hill, who there is he's a nice – he's a senior running back, Joseph Griffin. Um, he's a senior 5'10", 175 pounds. Looks pretty good out there. And he's a spellback, Coach B. He's not going to be their feature back. Their feature back is going to be their downhill runner, and that's going to be Aldridge. He, he, last week, Coach, went, had 14 carries, 139 yards, averaging 9.9 yards per carry. So Etiwanda is back, and they're ready to field that. So they, the, 
the, the kick from Oak Hills is short. It bounces at the 35-yard line and is picked up by number 55 from Etiwanda. And you know when a guy with a number 55 gets the ball, he's ready to run, and that's Weston Sabe. And he was ready to run, so it looks like he returned that ball to about the 30-yard line. Was there? I see the referees having a, a conference. Yeah. Was there? Was there any call? That was an interesting kick right there, Coach. But you can see, but it looks like uh, looks like they're going to go ahead and set this up and keep it rolling. Coach Davis is on the field. Coach B has the Eagles ready to go. Absolutely, he's in there in the huddle with his players. The Oak Hills Bulldogs defense is already out there and ready to go. So it's four minutes and fifty seconds, fifty-seven seconds to go live from Etiwanda Eagle Stadium in Rancho Cucamonga. Etiwanda is down seven-zero to the Oak Hill Bulldogs. McDonald's in the backfield. He has stat receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. He does a sweep to number twenty-one, Lawrence Stark. And it looks like there's some more laundry on the field, so let's see what's going on here. Hey, coach, and the stop was uh, the stop was by, uh, by Andrew Ross, middle linebacker, senior, six three, two hundred and five pounds, coach B, and he brought the wood. Absolutely. So that on that run, it was a stretch play by number twenty one, Lauren Stark. It was the penalty was against Etiwanda, but you can see right here that Oak Hills looks like they're going to deny decline that penalty. Wow. So you're looking at a second down and fifteen to go. And, Coach B, I'm telling you, what we're seeing is what Coach Davis said he was concerned about, the size affecting the Etiwanda Eagles. Etiwanda is in uh, spread formation, two receivers right, two left, shotgun, McDonald and Lawrence starts in the backfield. He has the ball off the start. He picks up five. He picks up ten. He picks up ten yards on second down. For the, They lost five on the first down, so he picked up ten, uh, and that kind of negates that. So now you're third manager. Coach, I don't know if they're taking – uh, starts on the sidelines and just wetting him down with some Vaseline because they cannot put a hand on him. Absolutely. Coach. Like we said, no one man can take him down. They're, they're still in the spread formation. Starts in the backfield. You have one receiver right, two receivers on your left, and he hands the ball out to Lawrence Starks again, and he picks up. And, and look at that. you got about ten people trying to bring Lawrence Starks down. That's what it takes to bring him down. Yeah, Coach, you have to – I know if I'm, if I'm a coach, and I'm on the other side, as Artie Allen, I'm going to focus on gang tackling, putting the multiple helmets on Starks, because he's causing problems in the single tackle character. So category. he picks up the first down. Edelman that has the ball spotted at their own 40-yard line, but they're in business and they're moving. You have, once again, three receivers on your right, one receiver on your left. McDonald is in the backfield. He sweeps to the left. He looks for his target. Oh, and number 82 was his target, and it was a play that he may have had the end zone on his mind because that was definitely reservation. Yeah, that's, 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 that's going to be Gordon Porter. Jordan Gordon, Porter. Jordan Porter, excuse me. And Jordan Porter had daylight there. But, again, I thought the, the way his body looked like it was positioned to me, as he was concerned with what was going on in the back, focus on catching the ball, and then you can get upfield. Three receivers on the left, one receiver on the right. McDonald's in the backfield by himself. Etowan is heading north. They're on the 41-yard line. They pull it back. He targets number 16. It looks like that was a catch on second down. He picked up about eight yards, and that's number 15, and that's I, going to be... I, Octavius Adrenas, and he's a, he's a junior receiver, 5'7", 137 pounds. A great little, a, a quick little inside route, Coach B, and the quarterback was able to find him in the midst of those linebackers. Three receivers left, one receiver to your right. Etowan is headed north to the end zone. McDonald's in the backfield. He has his running back with him, and his running back is going to be number number five, Kamari Tina. Uh, McDonald doesn't like the call. He looks over to Coach Davis. Coach Davis doesn't like the call either. So Coach Davis saw something he didn't like and called the timeout. Yeah, well, I can tell you right now, it, this is a very, very big third down play right here. Coach Davis wants to make sure that the, 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 uh, the play is in there. So he says, hey, let's take some time because he understands the importance of it. As I mentioned to you, Coach, one of the things we talked about to Coach Davis in the pregame was two things. Number one was offensive line, and number two was defensive line, and they're pretty stout up front, Coach B. Absolutely. Three minutes and 16 seconds to go. Etiwanda, as we said, is down 7-0 to the Oak Hill Bulldogs. They have the ball at their own 49-yard line, and like you said, you're looking at third down and about three to go. So this is a huge, huge play that they must they must convert. This. They I wouldn't say it's a, a, a must. You can still plenty. I mean, there's plenty of time. We're only in the first quarter. But for momentum, yeah, this well, is something you want to have. Well, well, there's a couple of factors right now. They are kicking into the wind, Coach B. So that well, we saw that affect the last little pooch punt they did. So that, that's a concern. You know, you right now you kick the ball. That ball only goes 10 yards, Coach B. They get at the 30. They showed they had no problem getting it from the 30 to the end zone. And we're talking about the Oak Hill Bulldogs, Coach. 
Coach Davis is getting the, giving the play. His team is out there, so you have three receivers on your left, one receiver to your right, McDonald in the backfield. He, it was a keeper. It was a read option. He kept it. He made the right the right decision, kept the ball. He saw that DN collapse in. So in that position, I love that offense because the defensive end can never be right because if he crashes down for the running back, then the quarterback keeps it. So you can never be right in that situation. Tommy McDonald made a fabulous play right there, and he knew his running back, if he put that ball in there too tight, he might take it from him. So he got it in there quick and was able to maneuver and get outside the tackle. Once again, Tommy McDonald is in the back. He pump fakes it. He's going up top to one of his favorite targets, number 82, Jordan Porter, and that was pass interference. So in that play on first down, the ball was spotted at Oak Hill's 45-yard line. He did a quick, it looked like a play, and this is what they do. He's setting that play up. He ran that short little pitch in the beginning of the game. He got the D in the bite and went over top to one of his favorite targets, number 82, Jordan Porter. And funny thing about that, Coach B, the running back wasn't even looking. But it just shows you because he did such a good job of the play action fake uh, in terms of getting that running back on the outside there. That both of them now on the defensive side, the Oak Hill Bulldogs, they, 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 it was good defense, but they got to get the head turned back around and see where that ball's at. That's why otherwise it won't be a pass interference. First and ten from the thirty yard line. We're in the spread formation. Number fourteen, Tommy McDonald's in the backfield. He likes when he sees he hands the ball off to number six. And that's going to be Kamir Dina. And that was a nice little run on first down. It looks like he picked up about two yards. Joseph Griffin on the stop. Again, seniors of free safety. Came up, made a big shot, and the rest of the Bulldogs came in and finished the running back off after that, Coach B. So Cashmere, Dina, and McDonald are in the back. You have three receivers on your left, one receiver to your right. And, and, and you got some pressure. Number 14, McDonald keeps the ball, and he picks up on that play. He got some serious pressure on that play. And he tried to make something out of nothing when he got rushed on second down. It was second at about 10. He, got, he uh, lost three yards on that play. So now you look at third down at about 12. Yeah, Coach B. Coach B, that was number 64, Jacob Murphy, senior defensive end, and was able to get in there, Coach B. We saw three Bulldogs make that penetration up there. It looked like he was looking to top throw a screen. One minute, 50, 53 seconds to go in the first quarter. It is third and about 12, and McDonald's going deep. He's looking over the top, and he was targeting number 19, and on that play, that was an incomplete pass. So he was, he was looking at Nick and that was an incomplete play. So it's fourth down and 12. The ball is spotted at the 32-yard line. This is this is like no man's land. Yeah, Coach B. I, I think here we see our guy Diego our, Garcia is coming yeah, out. Yeah, he's the kicker's coming out. And and, and and Mr. Garcia, great game. Had a 40. Had a 40. Had, you know, had I would say a post 45-yard field goal last week, Coach B. He's doing a great job for the uh, for the Eagles. Absolutely. You're listening to Fox Sports 1350 Game of the Week with Coach B. And Eternal, when it comes to Inland Empire Sports, the conversation starts and stops here, live on Fox Sports 1350. So number 77, Diego Garcia kicks the ball, is a great punt. It bounces at the 20, bounces down to the 10, and Etta Wanda, they down the ball inside the five-yard line. You talk about a great punt by Mr. Diego Garcia, number 77, for the Etta Wanda Eagles. Yeah, Coach B, I tell you what, as we were talking about, this is a huge game. I, I, you know the Bulldogs are, are chomping at the bit because, again, they lost this game. Similar situation, their homecoming last year lost to the Etiwanda Eagles 31-30. to So Artie Allen and his Bulldogs are definitely looking to get some revenge here, Coach B. Indeed, indeed. And they have a and, – and Oak Hill, like we said, they're coming off of a big win last week. They paid, played the Palmdale Falcons, and they beat them 50-14. to 14. So this, this, this is a strong team here that the Etiwanda Eagles are facing tonight. Oh, certainly, Coach B. And when, uh, when I talk to Coach Davis, he clearly understands that, and he says these Eagles are up for the challenge. So number four. Once again, for the Oak Hill Bulldogs, their quarterback number 14, Michael Delgado, is in the backfield, and it's a handoff. It is a power run to number right, and that is their running back number 25. So number 25 is Armis Aldridge. He picks up about two or three yards on first down. The ball is now spotted at their own six or seven yard line. So you're looking at seven, second down and about eight to go. One minute, 16 seconds to go from Etiwanda Eagles Stadium. Etiwanda Bulldogs are hosting their homecoming tonight against the Oak Hill Bulldogs. Yeah, Coach B, I told you, uh, Artie Allen said that the focus is going to be Aldridge. 
And, it's, and once again, it is a power run. Once again, to number 25, Aldridge, in, in, in right on cue. He runs the ball. It was a dive play. It was, he ran up the, the two hole, and that was a power run. He picked up about five yards. So you're looking at third down and about four to go. The ball is now spotted at about the 11-yard line. They need to get the ball to about the 19 to get a first down, 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. They decided they're going to run some power right now. Guaranteed. And, and our, our cap, one of the team captains, one of the four team captains, Evan uh, Gutierrez was able to come in there and make a big tackle there. And it is a sweet play, and they're going to, and the quarterback keeps the ball. Nice. And, it, and it looks like he picked up, he got just enough to get that first down. And I know that that's something that Coach Davis is going to focus on because he wants to make sure his defense shows up tonight. Well, Coach B, anytime you see that situation there, you generally teach your defenders. And I say this defenders in plural. Hey, one guy hits the runner, but you have to you have to make sure that quarterback knows you're there. So you got to put a shoulder pad. You got to let him know you're there and be a little physical with that quarterback on those plays. So once again, the quarterback is in the gun. Number fourteen, Delgado is in the gun, and he is he hits his, his receiver on an out route. That was a perfect catch. So his receiver was number thirteen, and that's going to be Kevin Davis with the reception. <laughs> so you're looking at, that was about a four-yard game. So you're looking at second down and about six to go. And as we said, Oak Hill, they came off a very, very big win, but also the Etowan, the Eagles had a big win last week where they hosted the, the Riverside Poly team, and they defeated that team 57 to, 52 to 7. And, Coach, what I like about that is, the, here, the, look, at their, look at their quarters. Quarter one, 14 points. Quarter two, 17 points. Quarter three, 14 points. Very consistent. So, again, Coach Davis said, hey, and I talked to him, you know, before the game. You know, he said, everybody saw, oh, you changed a lot. Coach Davis said, I didn't change one thing. He said, now the reps are starting to kind of come to play, and people are starting to kind of get the coaching. And we're talking about their, their, their point production in last week's game against the Bears. Indeed. Absolutely. So, Etiwanda now is, is one and two after, that, after beating the Riverside Poly Bears. Oak Hill is two and one after beating the Palmdale Falcons. The one game that they did lose was down in the Honor Bowl. It was a big game of it against Mission Viejo. But that gives you an idea of the level of competition that they're playing. Well, it was, what that was happening is, Coach, Artie Allen, and we talked to him a little bit um, at the uh, IE Preps media day, and he was focused. He said, hey, we have, a, we have some big teams, but we're prepared for the challenge. And, you know, and, and they're looking good, and they're ready to roll over there, Coach B. And, and Bella Italiano, we've got to talk about these guys, a proud sponsor of the Etiwanda Eagles, authentic Italian food made fresh for you. They do the post-game after party. They're located right up the street from Etiwanda High School at 7337 East Avenue, Street High, Fontana, California, 92336. We might as well tell these Oak Hill kids. You guys might – it's going to be a yeah. long drive. You might as well go <laughs> ahead and get up there. So we're looking – No school start, tomorrow, neither. As, yep, it's the start of the second quarter. The Oak Hill Bulldogs once again up 7-0 against Etiwanda. Number 14 is in the, in the shotgun. He does a sweep right. He picks up five yards, ten yards on second down. It looks like he may have just enough to get that first down. And that was a strong sweep play by Michael Delgado for the Oak Hill Bulldogs. Yes, sir, Coach B. Again, it's, it's homecoming for the Etiwanda Eagles. We're playing in front of a great harvest moon. It's a full moon out there. I mean, again, the scenery here, the really nice facility. They take, they take good care of us here. Coach B couldn't be anywhere else, man. Absolutely. So, once again, you're looking at first down. It was enough for the first down. The quarterback, once again, is in a spread formation. He's in the gun. He has his running back in the backfield, two receivers to your left. Oak Hills is now because you change the position of the field. Uh, when you switch quarters, so that now they're headed north. So on second down, they picked up about four yards. So you're looking at a third down and about six or seven yards to go. Indeed. Excuse me, second down. That was the first down play. Uh, the the uh, our our uh, our guy on the change had already changed the uh, changed the down. <laughs> He's going quick over there. Ready. He's going so quick. Ten minutes, fifty six seconds to go in the second quarter. Number twenty five on his sweet play. He picks up five yards. He picks up ten yards. There's some laundry flag, on yeah. the field. So there is some laundry on the field. So for number for the Oak Hills Bulldogs, this and like you said, their feature is going to be their running back Aldrich, and that's going to be Aldrich. And I mean, he's gotten the ball all night. I told you, Coach B, last week, uh, you know, and again, this is against the Palmdale Falcons. He was able to generate Coach B 139 yards on 14 carries. His long run, Coach B, was a 75-yard run. So the kid can not only is he is he consistent. They say he's a downhill runner. But what we've seen is the kid has speed. Hence why he's their featured back. Yes, indeed. So you're looking at 10 minutes and 45 seconds ago in the second quarter. The Oak Hill Bulldogs were tried again. So the penalty was on them. It looked like it was in the, the neighborhood of holding because you got pushed back about 10 yards. 
So you're looking at second down and about 18 yards to go. Uh, once again, Delgado's in the backfield. He makes the adjustments. He has two receivers to his left, one receiver to his right. His running back goes in the motion. He hands the ball off. It is a sweet play to the right, and he gets jammed up, and he gets driven and pile drive. Aldridge gets pile drive to the ground. I see more laundry on the field. I saw number 17. Jerome Wilson, Coach B, the, the uh, sophomore defensive back, six but roughly about six feet, 178 pounds. He was not. He was not fooled on that play at all, Coach B. He came up, and the corner's job, Coach B, is to keep the play inside and never let anybody get behind you. And he did just that. And that's got to be something Coach Davis has got to love because I know we talked to him prior to the season, and he was really excited about some of the underclassmen. And and Edwan is pretty stocked for future seasons. Without a doubt. I mean, primarily with Starks. You know, Starks again. They're featured back. And McDonald. Well, and McDonald, yeah, exactly. So you have, I mean, again, your building blocks are are there for next year, which is just great. So once again, you're looking at third and oh my, oh my goodness. goodness, look how big that line is. It may be third and Oak Hill for them to get that first down. So you're looking at third and about 25 yards for the Oak Hill Bulldogs. They're probably just going to try to get a respectable pass. And number 14 drops back. He he does a run. He picks up five yards. He picks up. Oh, he gets blasted. Whoa. He almost got sideline. Coach, he almost got himself a drink of Gatorade. He got hit so hard. Yes. My I goodness. They almost hit him to Upland, so they really stuck him on that on that sideline. And that's the one thing when you run those read options, when your quarterback is running the ball, he's, he's, he's a runner. Hey, hey, Coach, that's why they call it the naked boule, because you're out there by yourself, Coach, because there's nothing out there. And it's like you have to be careful. That's why, again, we've seen quarterbacks go down because of that. So you have to be conscious about that. So that was the third down in about 25. He picked up about 10 yards with 9 minutes and 51 seconds to go. This has become a stalemate. Edelwanda's defense has showed up. This game has had a lot of penalties, and I know Coach Davis is going to talk to his team about that at the half to clean that up. But with 9 minutes and 51 seconds to go, Edelwanda is still down 7-0 to the Oak Hill Bulldogs. So Oak Hill is ready to punt the ball. We have number 5 for Edelwanda deep. And he is he has he's signaled for the fair catch. Excuse me, that's number 6. That's Grayson. He signaled for the fair catch. He didn't want to get it, so the ball bounced at about the 40, at about Etiwanda's 39-yard line. Hey, Etiwanda's going to have some decent field, field position. Hey, Coach, you're very right. And, again, the, the, I know Coach Davis is excited about that. I wanted to kind of talk about the, the I mean, the tonnage that is on the the, uh, the Bulldogs lineman. There's a, there's a guy, Kevin Marquin, 305. Wow. Rocky Sewer, 301. So Etiwanda is in the spread formation. Two receivers left, one receiver to the right. Lawrence Starks gets a – I saw our guy, number 72, for Etiwanda pull, so I knew that had to be a running play, and that's going to be Chris Bradbury. So when you got that big guy, and you talk about size, Chris Bradbury is 6'6". Six, six. He's a senior, and he's 300 pounds. And when you're pulling, I know Coach uh, – I'm going to find him. That's the guy I want to run There behind. it is. So <laughs> it, was, it was a quick <laughs> run with, with, uh, with uh, Bradbury pulling, and Starks picked up about – Two yards on that play. So you're looking at second down in, in the gun. McDonald's in the backfield. He throws the ball to number nine. Puts pitch and catch number 19. And it looks like he picked up about a yard on that play. A really good pickup block by Starks. You saw the safety come from his safety position and go in there and blitz. It, it looked like he had a free hit at McDonald's. Uh, but again, our, our guy Starks with the silver shoes. He's, you know, he's flossing, and he maybe was able to pick up the block. Nick Cassidy picked up about two or three yards. McDonald's in the backfield. He throws the ball to Jordan Porter. Jordan Porter picks up five yards, ten yards. No one may not catch him. He gets the ball down to the 20, ball down to the 15. There is some there is some uh, laundry on the field, and when I saw McDonald go down, it looked like the neighborhood are roughing the passer. So that was about a 50-yard pickup for Jordan Porter, number 82, for the Etiwanda Eagles, and they may tack on some more yardage on this play. Coach B, again, that's what you want to see out of your quarterback. You want to see him being tough in the midst of adversity. He stood in there, Coach, made the throw, and look at look at the results from the receiver. And that penalty actually looks like it's going to go against Etiwanda. Oh, wow. That, that, if that is, Coach, that's going to have to be a hold, and that would be critical. So you're looking at third down and about as it's 
stands, you're looking at third down and about eight to go, but I, they haven't moved the ball, so maybe it was offsetting. It was offset on, yeah, it had to be. Eight minutes and 36 wow, seconds to go in there. White, White's had a big play by Jordan Porter, and they're back in the spread formation. Two receivers to your right, one to your left. you got Stars in the backfield. It is a pitch. Stars is going down here. He's trying to get to that edge, and they get him in the backfield, and you talk about a big play from that defender. That looks like that was number two. They came up and made a huge play for the for the Oak Hill Bulldogs on third down. And that's going, to be, that's going to be Andre Ross. He's a senior, 6'3", 205, and he was, again, not fooled by the play. And, and again, I know they talked to him about how to deal with Starks, tackle him low, and wrap up. And he did just that, Coach B. If he doesn't make that play, he probably takes that right to the end. Zone. Yeah, and, and, and again, that just shows you how special a running back is. And that's what Coach Davidson, you know, he reiterated to us at the pregame, that, hey, we got to get Starks touches. He is a special running back for us, and we've seen that on multiple occasions here, Coach B. And kind of what we talked about in the pregame, we talked about the uh, authentic Italian food. Yeah, hey, look, hey, you know, give me some Italian food, Coach B, pasta, some spaghetti, which I had a little bit, this, you know, this morning. I'm always with that. But a Bella Italiano, and, and, and like I said, I know they do the postgame party. So that's somewhere we're going to have to go and try to see if we can get to because I definitely want me something, some Italian food. we got to see if they can deliver us something, Coach B. Yes. So you're listening to Fox Sports 1350 Game of the Week with Coach B. Andy Turner, when it comes to Inland Empire Sports, you know the conversation starts and stops here, live on Fox Sports 1350. So we're we're eight minutes and twenty seven. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, eight minutes and twenty seconds to go. Etowanda was moving the ball. They were making some progress, but they got they, on that last play. The running back starts twenty one got stopped in the backfield. So it looks like they may send out the the punt team to go out there and punt that ball. Yeah. Oak Hill has showed up. Oh, there's no doubt about it. They didn't make this trip for no reason. And, again, I think they're still fired up from last year. So they marked their calendar. They said, hey, we're going to be the spoiler this year for Edwana's homecoming. Right, right. And, and that's the thing. Oh, oh, and, and Delgado, number 77, is out on the field, so it looks like he will punt. And we said last week he was the hardest working man in the stadium last, last game. Call him James Brown, Coach B. He was out there getting it going. He's a great punter. He's playing the ball from his own 25-yard line. Great booming punt. Punch the ball. Oh, wow. oh it was Muff. It was Muff. Oh. It looked like Etiwanda picked it up. You talk about a great turn of events. Number, number five. Six. Number six. Number six. Picked that ball up for Etiwanda. What a recovery for those Eagles. That is a well. huge play. That is number five, Coach B. Good call on that. And that is, uh, that is uh, Kashmir Dina. What a great football name. And Kashmir Dina was able to – and, again, Coach B, that ball came right off the pad. It came at Kashmir Dina with some speed. And for him to kind of collect himself and pick that ball up and know not to try to run with it, just fall down. Just fall so, on. So great presence of mind and great coaching by the coaching staff over with the Etiwanda Eagles. So Etiwanda is in business. They have the ball at, at, at Oak Hill's 22-yard line, first and 10, eight minutes, 40 seconds to go in the second quarter. McDonald's in the backfield. He hands the ball off to number, it looks like that may be number yeah. number five, Kashmir, again. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna he's coming back in for the, at the running back position for a quick second, Coach B. Yes, yeah. yeah. so Etiwanda is in great business. They picked up about two yards. So you're looking at second down at about two or three yards and about seven to go. They have the ball at Oak Hill's 25-yard line. McDonald's in the backfield. He has Kashmir in the backfield with him. Two receivers, three receivers to your right, one to your left. McDonald's rolling to his right. He is looking, he's looking, and he finds someone. He finds on the number 11. So I would tell you, that, that's going to be Devon Jenkins, a senior receiver, 5'9". Uh, he stands. I, uh, one thing I can say about Tommy McDonald, the quarterback for Etiwanda, he find, if you're open, he's going to find you. Oh, yeah, that was Devin Jennings on that, Coach, a senior wide receiver. And he was able to kind of get around that corner, Coach B. Again, a great, ta- great catch and way to get that ball up the field. Spread formation, once again, it is a read option. McDonald mm. decides to keep the ball. He runs and he picks up about two or three yards on that third down play. So you're looking at fourth down and about five to go. So in this situation with 16, 57 seconds to go in the second quarter, you're in no man's land. Hey, you got to kick that. And, Coach B, further, uh, one of the things I'd say, if I'm Coach Davis, and I know because because uh, Donald is a special player, you want to teach him to get down. And you have McDonald in the backfield, Cashmere with him, two, three receivers to his right, one to his left. McDonald doesn't like the play, so he looks over to Coach Davis. Coach Davis doesn't like it either. Coach Davis calls a oh, time yeah. out. So with 
six minutes and 34 seconds to go in your second quarter from Etiwanda Eagle Stadium. Etiwanda still trails the Bulldogs seven to zero. Coach Bean, it looks like they're talking to the kicker now, so I think they may go ahead and try to get this uh, get a field going there. Coach Bean, you know, again, going into the half, you don't want to go into the half with with no points. So you want to you want to try to score something with a great field position like this. You don't want to relinquish that kind of position, and you score zero points, Coach B. Absolutely. So on that play, it's, it's still a lot of time to go. The Etowan is only down by six. But you know what? This might be a time to call in the Army National Guard. Okay. This might be a time. Army National Guard, a proud sponsor and supporter of Etowanda Eagles football. So, you know, we want to say, you know, last week was September 11th. We want to say that we thank all of our men who served our country. Men and, and women. Their, men and women who put their lives on the line for us every day for this great country. So with six minutes and 34 seconds to go, Etiwanda is still down 7-0. Number 77, Delgado, he's in there. It looks like about a 40-yard field goal. It's up, and it oh, is wow. good. It what is a, good. What a great kick. This kid right here, you know, I mean, again, Coach Davis talked about it. He said the kid is getting good. He said his confidence is getting up, especially after last week's kicking experience where he was almost on the field more than the quarterback was, Coach B. Indeed he was. Six minutes, 33 seconds to go. Etiwanda Eagles, it's homecoming night. Everyone's excited. It is a great night for football life. We see you can – and we're in, we're in lovely Rancho Cucamonga right on the edge. When you look right out there, you see the 15 freeway. You see the 210 freeway. You see the San Bernardino Mountains. You, I mean, this, this, this view is amazing here. And, and, and I absolutely love it. So this is a great night for football. It's about, what, 70 degrees tonight. Man. In, in California, it doesn't rain. Yeah, right, you know, but what it does, what it will do, and, you know, right now we haven't experienced it, it does get a little chilly at night. So number 77, Delgado, is ready for the kickoff. He kicked, and he blasted Oh, he kicked that. that. He, had a, he had an attitude, Coach B, when he kicked that one. He kicked it right into the end zone. And as you know, in high school football, once the ball enters the end zone, it is a fair catch. So Coach Davis sends his defense out there to get ready and take on the uh, Oak Hill Bulldogs. So they're, they're ready to play some football with six minutes and 33 seconds to go. Etowan is ready. They just scored some points. And they're playing some good football now on defense. Indeed, Coach B. So Oak Hills is ready. They're, they're getting their plays. They're getting their signals coming in. So we'll see what Oak Hill can do. Um, they just gave up a field goal, but they're ready to play some football. They tried out on the field. Their quarterback, number 14, is ready to go ahead and, and get his team ready. He is in the gun. Number 14 is Michael Delgado. He has his running back in the backfield. It is a, a sweep right. He hands it up to 25. He picks up five yards. He picks up 10 yards. So on that play, number 25, uh, Armas Delgado picks up about 10. He picks up 10 yards, so he gets that first down. And he was tackled, Coach B, uh, by Evan Gutierrez and number 44, Edward Sacona. Both of those came, came him over there. Now again, Sacona was on the. He was coming back on the back because Aldridge was able to make him uh, able to make a miss on the first shot of him. So, again, Aldridge is a little sneaky kind of running back, Coach B. So, number 14, Delgado, has the ball off, runs against 25 to, to Aldridge. He picks up five yards. He picks up 10 yards. He breaks the ball all on first down. He brings the ball past the 50-yard line. He is now in Etiwanda territory. And you see Aldridge is feeling good about himself. Coach B, there's a reason. He came out of the game uh, last week against the uh, uh, Palmdale Falcons with 139 yards, averaging 9.9 .9 a carry. We're seeing that tonight, Coach B. Exactly. So Oak Hill is in the – they're in the spread formation. They have three receivers to their left and no receivers to their right. They have the running back and the quarterback, Delgado and Aldridge, in the backfield. They don't like to play first down. They have the ball at Etiwanda's 45-yard – 47-yard line. They didn't like to play. Look to the sidelines, and they got it, and they made the adjustment. And, and Aldridge on first down, it looks like he picked up about five yards. Again, Coach B. And, you know, if I'm Coach Artie Allen, I am fired up about this. Again, they're able to make sure – they're able to make sure that they're, you know, that, that line is stout up front and they're getting the blocking necessary. I know Etiwanda's defensive coordinator is going to make some adjustments. Yeah, because, again, that's Paul Unger, and he's able to do a lot of things in there, Coach B, so I know he's going to be making some adjustments. He made adjustments last week, Coach B, and we saw how effective that was. So second down and about five to go. Number 14, they do a sweep, a fake, where they did the jet sweep. Quarterback Delgado keeps the ball, and he picks up about four yards. So you're going to be looking at third down and about – Three or four to go. One of the adjustments I see they're going to have to make right now, they have to focus on the quarterback. 
Delgado is just sitting right there waiting for them, and they're making a play on the running back, but they're not disrupting the quarterback. So they got to start putting some pressure on them. I say put a hat on them. Four minutes, 30 sec- 38 seconds to go. They have the ball now spotted at Edelwan's 40-yard line. Delgado's in the backfield. He has Aldridge in the backfield. Delg- uh, Aldridge does a sweet right. He picks up about, it looks like it's going to be close. They may have to measure this on third down. He may have had enough to get that first down. Well, I think Artie Allen right now, he's poised to go for that, Coach B, no matter where that's at, even if, they, if it's a first or not. Because, you know, it, it's about, I don't know. Fourth down is about a yard. Yeah, maybe. maybe a yard to go. And, if I'm, you know, the way that line is playing with all that, you know, with all that, uh, with all that weight on that offensive line for the Bulldogs, I'm going for that, Coach B. So Delgado is in the shotgun. Once again, he has Aldridge in the backfield. He has two receivers to his left, one to, two, to, two to his right. He's going north up the, up the field for your radio dials. He hands the ball off. It is a dive to number 25. And like you said, that offensive line is putting in some work right now. He needed about two yards. It looks like he picked up about five. Coach B, before he even got the ball, the line had already moved the Etiwanda Eagles two yards up the field already, Coach B. So, again, they may have to uh, put some more players up there. So what I uh, about these Bulldogs, we haven't really seen them uh, really put the ball in the air a lot, but I'm going to have to make that quarterback make the adjustment. And that's me. a big thing to say when you think about it. Delgado's a sophomore. Oh, yeah. So you want to make him beat you. So he's in the shotgun, and speaking of that, he goes and throws a, a, a right on cue. He, he does a pitch and toss for a five-yard. He was in the shotgun. He does a pitch and catch, and it looks like it was about a five-yard pickup to his receiver number 13. And that's the second Edouan the Eagles player I've seen without a helmet, Coach B. They might have to do something with the chin strap. And number 13, once again, for Oak Hill to pick up about five yards on that play is Mr. Kevin Davis. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So, once again, you have Delgado in the backfield. He has his offense ready. He has his running back. He has the new running back, Griffin. which is running back. So, number Griffin. And it's, once again, it's a dive. It's off tackle. And, and Nothing it special, like, Coach B. It looks like Oak Hill has found something they like. Oh, there's no doubt. Well, uh, Coach B, this is what they do. We talked to Coach Artie Allen. He, he said it. There's two running backs, and they run the football, Coach B. I mean, because you got to think about this. Last week, Coach B, I mean, the quarterback for the Bulldogs had nine. He had, excuse me, he had eight completions, Coach B. Eight of nine passes, 99 yards, was averaging 12.4 carries. So they don't throw the ball a lot, Coach B. So on third down, it, it, it looks like Delgado doesn't see anything he likes. There's nothing downfield, so he keeps the ball, and he picks up about four yards on that play. Two minutes and 29 seconds to go, and, and, and Oak Hill has something going. It's another fourth down. They're in no man's land. They have the ball at about at a one 28-yard line, and the offense is still on the field. Yeah, Coach B, but again, here goes the situation right here. If I'm Coach Artie Allen for the, I mean, for the Bulldogs, Guess what I'm doing? I'm going that thing. I'm running that thing right up the middle until they stop us. Spread formation. You got Delgado, Delgado and Griffin in the backfield. Two receivers right to his left. And, and once again, it's a sweep to the right. They found him 5, 10, 15, 20. No one's going to catch him. Touchdown for number seven, Oak Hill Bulldogs. That's going to be Joseph Griffin. Joseph Griffin is a senior running back, 5'10". He, he runs about 175 pounds. And he picked up he picked up all the yards needed. It was off tackle and it was a power run to the right with one minute fifty eight seconds to go. Oak Hills is in business. They're up thirteen to three now. Hey Coach B, this is what again, what I saw that time you saw the Eagles, so Coach Davis must have talked to him. You saw the Edwanda Eagles player trying to make a play on the quarterback, but that time the quarterback Delgado was able to slip it off to Griffin and the Griffin's a running back for the Bulldogs last week against the Palmdale Falcons had we went six for 58 yards, averaging 9.7 yards a carry, so he's special. And number 13, uh, senior Mr. Do Everything, the six-footer, 185-pound, wide receiver, strong safety, and, and kicker. kicker. <laughs> it just scores the extra point wow. for the Oak Hill Bulldogs to put his team up. Thir- uh, excuse me, 14 to three with one minute 58 seconds to go in the second quarter from Etiwanda Eagles Stadium. What the Etiwanda Eagles are hosting on homecoming night, the Oak Hill Bulldogs. Yeah, we see the Etiwanda faithful kind of getting ready for the home- homecoming fe- festivities. I know Coach Davis wants to make sure these fans are excited about that. So they want to get a big play going. As you mentioned, Coach B, it's a two-minute one. I mean, not a two-minute warning, but in terms of executing plays, you've got to get that done in less than two minutes now, Coach B. Yes, yes, you do. So they, the Oak Hill Bulldogs are ready to kick the ball off. They're kicking it off from their from the uh, 40 yard 40 yard line. They're going to kick it. it. Looks like they kind of pooch kick it, and that's it looks like that's going to oh, wow. go out of bounds. And that's yep. going to be a big, big problem because you, that's a penalty. Yeah, you'll take that, Coach B. You'll take that any time. I mean, here's the situation: Artie Allen's Bulldogs put up 
50 points last week, Coach B. So they're no, you know, they're no stranger to offensive output. They can do it. So Coach Davis has his workout up for, cut out for him in terms of getting these Eagles fired up to go ahead and respond. Mm-hmm. So with one minute 58 seconds to go, Etiwanda's down 14 to three to the Oak Hill Bulldogs, and with that penalty, they're going to start the ball. Now they're going to get it's a 15 yard penalty because they're going to start the they're going to start off instead of the 20, they're going to start off at the 30 their own 35 yard. Line. And if you're the Etiwanda Eagles, you take anything you can get at this point, Coach B. McDonald's in the backfield. He has Cashmere in the backfield with him. He quick slant to number 19, and he takes a big pop. There was a penalty on the play, and for Etiwanda, that's number 19, and that's going to be Nick Cassidy. He takes a big pop. At the end, Nick Cassidy is a senior wide receiver. He runs about 5'11", 160 pounds. But even with that big shot, he held onto that ball. Held onto the ball, and he's and he's off the field on his own. So, Coach B. So, and you know, and again, he, it, it, to 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 be fair to the to the Bulldog player, it wasn't a dirty hit, Coach B. But again, I think it's a defensive rece- de- defensive player, and I think that's why he got the flag. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so yes, they're going to, so they're going to tack on. So that was a 10 yard re- reception from McDonald to Cassidy, and they're going to tack on another 15 yards with 1 minute and 54 seconds to go. That's big for Atawanda because now you're in Oak Hill's prime territory, Oak Hill's 40 yard line. Yeah, it's interesting. I, you know, as a, I don't know what you really do right there. McDonald's in the backfield. He rolls to the right, doesn't see anything he likes, so he takes, a, he takes off and runs. There, yeah. he, he, Looks like there's, face mask. there's some more laundry on the field, and that may be a face mask. So the quarterback, he didn't see anything he liked. He did a sweep to the left, decided to keep the ball, picked up about four yards. But we have to see what the referee is going to call because there was some more laundry on the field. Yeah, Coach B, I tell you, that quarterback makes me just a little nervous because, again, he's staying up with the football just a little too long. And, you know, again, that corner was right there ready to make a play on him. So you got you to gotta work on getting down. And it looks like I was a 15-yard face match, so, a personal foul call, Coach. So that's 30 yards on two plays Oh yeah. penalty. Oh, yeah. So, so I mean, well, well, we've seen 45 yards. Uh, 30 of those yards come via the penalty and another 15 yards out of offensive output. So you're in D.A. D- D- Diego de Garcia's field goal range. They have the ball at about their 25. They throw the ball up, oh. and it bounces off. Number 15, Hunter Black catches the ball. So Etiwanda was in a shotgun formation. It was a quick pass. He targeted number 19. Number 19 was Nick Cassidy, but it bounced off, and Hunter Black was able to get the ball, and he was in the right place at the right time. So it's first and 10 from about the three-yard line. Yeah, Coach B. And that was that was that was because no, generally they teach you to knock that down, Coach B. Still spread formation, and McDonald hands the ball off to Cashmere. Touchdown! One minute, eighteen seconds to go in the second quarter. Etiwanda gets that touchdown. They drove. The, remember, they started at their own thirty-five. Yeah. They picked up thirty yards in penalties, and in less than twenty seconds, they just scored a touchdown. Just what the doctor ordered, Coach B. Hey, by any means necessary, penalties. Offensive output, a kick, whatever you can do to get that ball down there, they needed to respond, and they did it in less than a minute's time, Coach B. So one minute, 18 seconds go from the second quarter. Our guy, Delgado, number 77, is on the field. The extra point is up. The extra point is good. And how important is that for Etiwanda? They just gave us a touchdown. Oak Hill played power football and pretty much ran the ball all the way down their throat. How important is that for Etiwanda to come back and respond like that? Well, that's huge, Coach B, because as you alluded to, the Artie Allen's Oak Hill Bulldogs were, I mean, smash-mouth football. And you, know, and you know, Coach B, that's, that's the greatest. You know, for when you go in there and, and people are able to, to have that kind of op- offensive production against you, that's tough. So for Etiwana to respond and respond the way they did in less than a minute's time, that's great for the Etiwana Eagle faithful. Absolutely. So with one minute, 18 seconds ago, as we said, Etiwanda now trails the Oak Hill Bulldogs on homecoming night, 14 to 10. And De- De- Diego Garcia, number 77 for the Etiwanda Eagles, ready to punt the ball from his own 40. And he kicks the ball. He kicks it up. He pops it up. And the ball takes a bounce at the 30. Oh, wow. Oh, it's, and it's it another one. Again. Wow. It was muffed again. And it looks like Etiwanda, yes. Etiwanda comes up with the ball again. And that ball was picked up by number, it looks like that was number 40. Jordan Porter, number and, 82, and that's, that's one of Etiwanda's speedsters. Coach B, Coach Artie Allen needs a hug. He was livid on the sidelines because 
that's twice, Coach B, where they've with their with their two up, kickoffs in a row. Yeah, where they've just muffed, and, and it, it may have very well been the same guy, Coach B. Oh wow, that is a tough break for the for the Bulldog. Diego Garcia knows who he's kicking it to. So with one minute fourteen seconds to go, Ed Wanda will take the ball at Oak Hill's twenty five yard line. So you're already in Diego Garcia's. Field goal range. Just like that, Coach B. And we saw what they did in less than a minute's time on the, play, on, the on the series before. McDonald's in the backfield. He's in the spread. He sees something like he pitches Will the Rock. ball to his receiver. And that is to number six, five, 10, 50. Whoa. He gets in. And Whoa. that is touchdown. And in less than a minute, that was a it was a wheel route to number yes. five, Kazmir Dina, that, that they pitched that to. And in less than a minute, Etta Wanda has stormed back and taken the lead in the game. Coach, that, that kid doesn't even need a nickname. You know what I mean? Kazmir Dina, what a great football name. On the wheel route, and again, Coach B, got to say, uh, you know, again, you got to talk about that quarterback, McDonald. He, he, he really put a fake on that defensive end because he wasn't ready for that. The defensive end's playing that. He jumps up. He picks that ball, Coach B. He can, he can still be running up the 15 freeway. And that's a good point. McDonald stayed in there, and he took a big shot at the end yes, of he that did. play. And he threw it right over the top and hit and hit Cashmere for about a uh, – it was a 25-yard play. First what a tough kid. With one minute and nine seconds to go, the Etiwanda Eagles have stormed back. They were down uh, 14 to 3, and they have stormed back and taken the lead. Yo, uh, Diego Garcia with the extra point, it was good. So Etiwanda now leads this contest on homecoming night 17 14. And, and I just asked you the question now, how important is it now to respond and take the lead? Oh, yeah, Coach B. I mean, wow, that is something. But I tell you what, Coach, if I'm, a, if I'm the uh, Etiwanda's Eagles coach, the thing that you want to hang your hat on, you want one of the toughest players on your team to be the to be the quarterback. And Tommy McDonald is just that for the Etiwanda Eagles, coming in as a junior, 6'2", 169 pounds, and he'll be there next year. Diego Garcia kicked the ball up. This time Oak Hill fields the ball, and they bring the ball up to about their 35-yard line. So they were determined to make sure they got the hands crew out there and to get that to, to, to receive that, that ball. That kid almost scored. <laughs> He had that, that football so tight, I think the air almost came out of it, Coach B. Yes, he did. Because, like you said, I know Coach head coach Artie Allen wasn't wasn't going to have another uh, uh, must punt. No, that was not going to happen. There was no question about that, Coach B. So the the hands team was out there, and now with one minute and four seconds to go, the Bulldogs, Oak Hill Bulldogs, are ready to get back on the field. Um, you have the quarterback back in the backfield, number 14, and it is a quick pitch. It is on first and 10. It is an incomplete pass on that play where number 14, uh, Delgado, was targeting his receiver. The receiver that he targeted was number number nine, Jose Stokes. Now, now, yeah, Jose was Stokes. Now, uh, now, yeah, Josiah Stokes. Josiah. Now, now, here's the situation, Coach B. Now, this kid, Michael Delgado, last year, Eight completions, I mean, excuse me, last game, pardon me, against the uh, Palmdale Falcons. Eight, um, eight completions, nine attempts. You know, uh, th- this is not what he does, Coach B, so he's in uncharted territory. So second down there in spread formation. He does a quick pitch over the top. He has spread formation, three receivers to his left, one to his right, and he does a quick pitch, and it looks like he targets number 13, and I don't, that's Kevin Davis. All world. Kevin Davis picks up about seven yards on that second down play. The ball was spotted at about the 27-yard line, so with that play, now they move the ball to about the 41-yard line, their own 41-yard line. So you're looking at third down with 50 seconds to go. So is this Hail Mary time? Uh, Coach B, well, again, you, you have to have the personnel for that, Coach B, because what we talked about, again, Michael Delgado. I mean, again, in terms of stats, well, we, you know, I have, we haven't got this is going to be the first time we've set eyes on him. But in terms of stats, he doesn't jump off the stats with the, with the ability, because, well, again, again, based on stats, that he can throw the ball 70 yards down the field, Coach B. Yes, he can. So they see their play. They like their play. They're ready to come back out, and Delgado has his has his players. He's back in the spread formation. He has three, two receivers to his right, two to his left. He has running back in the backfield. He's looking, and it's taking a lot of time. He rolls to the left, doesn't see anything he likes, so he's spreading to the, he keeps the ball, and he picks up. It looks like he picked up enough for the first down. 
So on third down and four to go, he got enough to pick up the first down. But the most important thing, which is smart, he got out of bounds. Yeah, again, heads up player by the. I mean, heads up play by the kid. Again, you know, like I said, he's a gamer. This kid's a sophomore. He's a gamer. He's shown us a great deal already early in the game, Coach B. But again, we, we, we're going we're gonna to have to see if number there's two things: if he can get the ball, he's in kicking position, and if so, can the kicker complete the process? So we're back. He's back in the gun. He has one receiver in the uh, running back in the back. He has one, two receivers to right. Oh, wow. He goes deep. He targets number 10, and it looks like they were jockeying down the field. So as he was going down the field, he was jo- uh, he was targeting number 10, Jordan Afulea. Um, so And Delgado, I- hey, no problem with the arm strength. He got it up there where the ball needed to be. And I say he threw at least, let's see here, I want to say 30 yards or so, Coach B. And so he does have an arm. He has an absolute arm. So even though he's a sophomore, he was able to get that ball up. So you're looking at second down. The ball is about the 45-yard line, 33 seconds to go, second and 10 because on first down was an incomplete pay, and no one ran and got the ball, so the referee has a chance. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's like, hey, this was not in my job description. Sorry. Exactly. So next time he wants to make sure the kids pick up that football. Indeed. So, well, hey, Coach B, oh, I, I want to say this. Folks, you want to stay tuned because when, when we come back from the break here, we're going to have some hot time scores for you. So number 44, Delgado keeps the ball. He does a sweep to the right. He picks up about five yards, but there was some flat, there was some laundry on the field, yep. and we're going to see what that goes. A little extracurricular activity from number 56 of the Oak Hill Bulldogs, and it looks like number – that's number uh, – Number 64 for the Etiwanda Eagles. I don't know if that's what drew the penalty, but it looks like it, Coach B. So we're still looking to see what the referee does. He has the ball, and it looks like he's about to march back like that's going to go against the uh, Oak Hill Bulldogs. I don't, see a, I don't see any signal yet, Coach B. No, I do not, but I, all I see is him marching back. So that is, that, that's probably in the field. It's a 10-yarder. I would say it's probably going to be somewhere in holding. Yeah. So you're looking at third down and 20. Uh, the Oak Hill Bulldogs now have the ball spotted at their own 35-yard line with 27 seconds to go in the second quarter. But they're down now. The Oak Hill Bulldogs, Etiwanda Eagles on homecoming night, have stormed back to wow. take the lead. They're up 14-7 to against the Oak Hill Bulldogs. And no one wants to lose on their homecoming night. Oh, no, 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 no. They're no. playing with some extra energy tonight. Well, well, again, Coach B, they're having to combat the fact that the Bulldogs want revenge from their uh, homecoming loss last year, Coach B. So Delgado's in the shotgun. He decides to keep the ball. He's he sweeps to the left, and I would say he probably picked up, depending on where they spot him, because he was rushing to get out of bounds. It looks like he picked up maybe a yard or two on that play. He had a shotgun formation. He had two receivers to his right, two to his left. But it does not look like that was too many yards for him. So with 20 seconds ago, he did get out of bounds. You're looking at third down and about 19 to go. Friday night lights, Coach B, right here in the great city of Rancho Cucamonga. I mean, where would you where else would you want to be, Coach B? Uh, homecoming night for the Etiwanda Faithful here against uh, the Oak Hill Bulldogs. And, you know, again, two great teams, two great coaches. And it's going to be a battle. It already has been, Coach B. It's been a chess match all night for the Etiwanda, for the Etiwanda Eagles. So now we're back in the shotgun formation. Delgado, he has one receiver to his right, three to his left. He sends his running back in motion. He's looking downfield. He, he doesn't have anywhere to go. So Delgado, he runs and he scrambles and he picks up maybe four or five yards. And he was met as soon as he broke that line of scrimmage by number 58, Alex Sekoli. Uh, as soon as he crossed that line of scrimmage. So you're fourth down and about 15 to go, and it, there's zero on the clock. So, yep, that is it. That is going to be it for your first half. So when you look at it, the Etiwanda Eagles, have they're, they're pretty excited. They're pretty fired up. They've got to be excited well, going in the half. Coach B, I tell you, I saw something. You know, and, and what was going on there, if you on that pass play, you only had Davis that was going out there long, Davis is double team, so I mean, you know, in terms of, I, I don't know if their 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 objective was to throw it up the field. Generally, Coach B with something like that, you want to have multiple options, you would think. And like you said, it's Friday Night Lights. We're really excited about what's going on. We are the Inland Empire's home for NASCAR. Fox Sports 1350. KTDD. Homecoming night here for the Etiwanda Eagles again, Coach B. Think about this. This is the first ever homecoming event. For the Etiwanda Eagles at their home field. Got to be a special time for all the parents, the players, 
and also these uh, these nice young ladies that are here being uh, courted in the homecoming process. So Etiwanda was built in 1983, and this is the first year that they're going to have their own on-campus stadium. Just amazing. Just yeah. amazing. The school is over 30 years old, and they're just now getting their stadium. So that, that is one amazing feat. So well, I, you know, again, getting a chance to really kind of talk to Coach Davis in the beginning of the game, Coach B, this thing hasn't worn off yet. He's still jacked up about this. I mean, you know, just... He, you know, he, he wants to make sure that we're being accommodated, Coach B, but they're so excited about this happening right here at Etiwanda High School, Coach. Yes, it is. So, Etiwanda, when you look at the game, when you look at the first half, the one thing that kind of sticks to my mind and what really stands out to me is I know Etiwanda is going to make some adjustments on the defensive side of the ball, but when you look at that, there was just a – Oak Hill pretty much got what they wanted when they ran that ball. Yes, sir, Coach B. And, again, we talked about this, Coach B, again – they, led by the, the, the stellar uh, senior running back, Aldridge. Again, Coach B, last week against the Palmdale Falcons, these cat, I mean, uh, the Bulldogs put up 50 points behind the stout running of Aldridge. 14 carries, 139 yards, averaging 9.9 to carry, was able to break free for a 70, 78-yard run. The Bulldogs, led by Coach Artie Allen, there's something serious. And when you look at that, I mean, when, when Aldridge, who is a – he's a senior running back. They also have Griffin, who is their, their stud as well. He's a senior also, number seven. He had six carries for 58 yards. His, he averaged 9.7. Aldridge uh, averaged 9.9, putting Jim Brown to shame. Uh, his longest <laughs> run was 24 yards, and, and, and he had two touchdowns. Both Aldridge and Griffin had – Two touchdowns each. Well, again, Coach B, we kind of talked about this going into the half. Delgado, who is a sophomore quarterback, which is special in itself, you know, he only had nine attempts uh, for 99 yards, Coach B. Still had a quarterback rating of uh, 161, which is good. Had a long of 30, 32 yards. So, but what we see out of here, what we see out of him, especially out of a sophomore quarterback, the poise. The playmaking ability, the, the the presence in the pocket, which is hard to teach, Coach B. I mean, you know, you, you know, for coming from a coach standpoint, that's almost impossible to teach a kid that. Yes, it is. And when you look at for receiving, their receiver last week that had the most yards from them was Mr. Kevin Davis. He had four receptions with 63 yards, average 16 yards. His long was 32 yards, and he had two receiving touchdowns. So let's just do some math real quick, Coach B. If he had four receptions, and I mean. You know, he almost had, he had half of the catches, Coach B. Half of the passes thrown were going to him. So, I mean, it, it lets you know. I mean, if I'm Coach Davis, I'm, 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 you know, I'm kind of I'm putting that in, a, in, in perspective. Hey, we got to watch out for Davis here, number one. Number two, we have to stop the run. Easier said than done, Coach B, especially when they're outside on the front end. Absolutely. On the front, on, on, the, on the, uh, uh, the front line there. And I agree. And when you look at your Etiwanda Eagles last week, as we said last week, they took on the – uh, the Riverside Poly Bears, and in that game, Etiwanda was able to put up 52 points. The Poly Bears were able to put up seven points. It was a it was a great win for Etiwanda. They went into that game 0 and 2, so that was a game that they really wanted to get, and they wanted to make sure they got that win. Led by junior quarterback Tommy McDonald, he went 12 for 19 for 190 yards. He had two touchdown passes. Did have one pick. His, uh, his long pass was 35 yards, quarterback rating of 109.5. And Coach B, Jr., uh, Lawrence Starks, again, you know, he had, he had the, the Cinderella shoes on last week, had the gold shoes on, the gold slippers uh, last week, was able to scamper for fit, uh, on 15 carries, 112 yards, average of 7.5 yards a carry, two touchdowns. His longest run, Coach B, 33 yards. So, and again, we also had Kashmir Dina, he had five carries, 78 yards, averaging 15.6 a carry. He also kind of came in there. Excuse me. He also came in there with one touchdown. And because the offense they run, they get a lot of yards from their from their quarterbacks as well. When you look at Tommy McDonald, he was he had eight uh, rushes for 19 yards, and then Sean Murphy, who's another quarterback, he had three carries for 57 yards. So that's a lot of yards to put to be put up by your your, your two quarterbacks. And, and again, you know, what it, it still shows they're still getting uh, good. Uh, you know, uh, Mark Perry, sophomore receiver, he still was able to get two catches, 63 yards, uh, averaging 31.5 yards. Had a touchdown. Also, Hunter Black, our guy, Hunter Night Night, had three three catches, 
39 yards, averaging 13 uh, a, a catch, and also was able to get a touchdown as well. So, again, no slouches on the receiving end for the Etiwanda Eagles, Coach B. Mm-hmm. And another big-time receiver they have, the tra- transfer Jordan Porter, had three receptions for 45 yards, averaging 15 yards. Uh, per carry, had 26 total. When you look at Mark Perry, when you think about it, he's a sophomore, had two receptions, 63 yards. He averaged 31.5 yards per, uh, per reception. And yes. that, that is huge. Yes, it is, Coach B. And again, uh, on the defensive end for the Eagles, and again, we're talking about their game last week against the Riverside Poly Bears. You also had sophomore Henderson, number 40, had four solo tackles, six assisted, Totaling at 10 tackles, Coach B, bar, bar none, was the guy on the defensive end. However, we also saw Evan Gutierrez with five tackles as well and also had our guy, looks like, uh, uh, looks like uh, Kyle Edwards, senior, number 33. He came in there, and again, I believe he's one of the team captains, if I'm not mistaken, had seven total tackles as well, Coach B. Yes, and, and on the defensive end, when you talk about that, you look at one of the guys we know as one of the captains, number two, Evan Gutierrez. He had one interception for four yards. Um, and, and Grayson, Andre Grayson, he had, it looks like he had, he had one as well. So, uh, so that's pretty big for the team. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. But, you know, we're, gonna, we're coming in here, Coach B, right now because it looks like they're going to be wrapping up this, the uh, homecoming festivities, which is always – a special time for the for you know for the uh, Etiwanda faithful. I stand corrected. I apologize. It was Sean Franklin who had the interception last week. Okay. Uh, it was not Grayson, but Grayson's out there. Number six, he's out there. So that's our and, guy. And you look at it. The leaders for them on defense are, are are their seniors. So these are kids that have been around and they're seasoned. Oh yeah, and I think Coach Davis did a good job of highlighting those because you saw. Uh, I think two of them are the team captains. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a. Uh, Special time. We're coming into this halftime, uh, to the second half, Coach B. What are your thoughts on what the Eagles need to do to maintain this lead? Well, with that, it, as we said, their defense has got to show up. Their defense has got to – and I know, I'm know, i sure Coach Davis and his defensive coordinators are in there right now making the adjustments they need so they can come back in the second half. Indeed. You know, I don't want to forget about this. You know, our, the hardest working guy in the field last week, Diego Garcia, he had eight kickoffs. He had uh, four punts, uh, and the punts, he had 154 yards of punts, <laughs> averaging 38.5 yards. His longest punt was 42 yards. Right. Coach B, I want to give a shout I'm glad you mentioned that. There's, another, there's a third wheel to this, big, to, to this train we have. I want to give a shout-out to our guy that's in the station, making this happen for us, making sure we're all queued up and sounding great on the line, our guy Greg Holler. Absolutely. So Greg Holler is a great guy. He's done engineer. a lot of work. In, engineer extraordinaire. He's with us every Saturday morning when we listen to when you listen to IE Sports that on Fox Sports 1350. He does all the the Quake games. Yes. Uh, the Quake season unfortunately is over, uh, so I, I didn't even get a chance to see a game this year. Yeah, yeah. As you said, I was gonna go check out our guy, but they had Clayton up there, man. You know, anytime yeah. you get Clayton Kirkshaw, yeah. I mean, they almost had that. Th- I thought I thought President was I thought President Obama was up there. I thought, that Obama. Yeah. yeah but so, but yeah, he wasn't. It, it was it was Clayton. So. Yeah. So when Clayton shows up you know that he gets priority. So we're looking at about about two minutes uh, till we get back to some action. And, and again, the Etiwanda Eagles on homecoming night lead the Oak Hill Bulldogs 17 to 14. What do you? What adjustments do you see out there, Eternal, that Coach, need to be made? Coach B, uh, I, I'm gonna. There's there's one area that stands out, and that is stopping the uh, Oak Hill Bulldogs run. However, they're gonna have to do that by going up there and meeting that line head up. Right now the line has been imposing their will. We saw some stops uh, before we got into the half, so hopefully they've kind of sewed up the loose end. But that, uh, the, uh, any assessment that I would make about it is they're going to have to stop the run, but doing that they're going to have to contend with the real huge size, the size difference that the Oak Hill Bulldogs uh, 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 propose to the Etiwanda Eagles. And that is indeed. So it looks like Coach Davis is out at the center of the field. I see his Etiwanda Eagles coming up. And it looks like the Etiwanda Eagles are, are, are ready to protect this house. Indeed. And we're once again, we're live from Rancho Cucamonga on the campus. Etiwanda Eagles 
Stadium for the Etiwanda Eagles homecoming night as they take on coming down from the high desert, taking the 15th freeway. The, uh, the Oak Hills Bulldogs are taking on the taking on the Oak Hills Bulldogs. So we're ready to rock and roll. Let's do it, Coach B. Uh, we see our guy there. You know our you know our, our guy. You know we, you know a lot of the Oak Hills uh, the Bulldogs staff we're familiar with, Coach B. We've had him on the show. So I mean these are these are folks we're familiar with. Uh, but wow, this is going to be. Uh, and I know they're a little upset because they had the momentum, Coach B, up until two minutes left. Roughly, I'd say about two minutes, maybe three minutes left in the, in the, in the uh, second quarter. Oak Hills clearly had the momentum, and it shifted quickly. Yes, indeed. So, in speaking of that, at the time, they were up 14-3. to three. Yeah. And there were two botched kickoffs yep. that Etiwanda turned into 14 points to give them a 14-7 to seven lead. So, it's, it's been the special team's play that has led to the turnaround in the game. Yes, sir. So, so it looks like... Uh, we see the players on the field. The players look like they're ready. The hardest working player on the field, number 77, uh, Diego Garcia, has his uh, team ready. Yes. It looks like we're about two minutes out. Coach Davis is having a conversation with the referees, letting them know <laughs> this is our house. We paid the light bill. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, you know, tonight was a great night. Indeed. Uh, Have time. You know, it takes you back to when you were in high school. For me, it was a long, long time ago. <laughs> but it takes you back to high school days, and, and, and it's nothing like homecoming night. No, no. Home, you know, it's special for our parties involved. It's special. I mean, you know, folks have spent a lot of money for the dresses, for the, the, the potential homecoming queens and kings. You know, if you're, if, you're the, if you're the guy escorting, happen to be escorting one of the queens, you know, you've got to have a tuxedo, you've got to get a suit. There's a lot going on, Coach B. A lot of money being spent. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> so 77 Del- Delgado. Uh, Diego, I'm sorry, De- Diego Garcia, I apologize, sets the ball at the 40-yard mark, and he's ready to kick it off, and he kicks it up, he, ki- he pops it up. Look at that. He sees something, he lights the ball, oh, look at, at the that, 30, Coach B. and don't tell me once again, Coach. the ball is bouncing around. It looks like it was almost fielded once again by the Edelwein. My, 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 my. Well, look at it, he's like. jacked up. And Coach B, again, they're playing – to the Oak Hill Bulldogs' disposition of not being able to handle the uh, you know those few kicks in the uh, first half, and they said, "Hey, let's see if they let's see if they they've sold that up yet." And, and and if you ask me, Coach B, they have not. And and what I like is uh, Diego Garcia. He's popping the ball up with enough and time. If they don't catch the ball or field it, it has a spin on it that's very hard to control. Wow. So the kickoff with 11 minutes and 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. You have the Oak Hill Bulldogs coming out on the field, and they are ready to play. So their quarterback, once again, is number 14, and that's Michael Delgado. He has in the backfield with him number 25, Aldrich. He hands the ball off on a sweep to the left. It's a quick die, uh, and he hands the ball off. And it looks like Aldrich picks up about six or seven yards. The ball was spotted at about the 20, their own 28-yard line. So they're in business, second and about four. Coach B, that's a football player there. Uh, number 25, Aldridge for the Oak Hill Bulldogs. That kid right there, I mean, he has a motor. He's low to the ground, Coach B, and very hard to tackle. So Oak Hill is in a – they're in the shotgun, three receiver to the left, one to the right. It's a sweep to the left, 25. He picks up five yards. He picks up ten yards on second down. He picks up about – 10 yards on that play. So, uh, as you said, he's a football player. Yeah, there's no question about that, Coach. He's presented some, some huge problems uh, for the Etiwanda Eagles. And I think a lot of that is, Coach B, because the line is doing such a good job of getting the Etiwanda Eagles off the line of scrimmage and pushing them back at least a couple yards before they're even able to even touch the kid. So the ball is spotted at their own 47-yard line. He sends a, re- a receiver in motion, three receivers to the left, one to the right. Another sweet play to the left off tackle. Uh. He picks up five yards. He, up, he is still chomping, and he picks up about 13 yards. They see something that they like on that, on that run. Coach B, he's running the ball with very bad intentions. And, again, he's now – He's finishing off the runs. That's what you teach your real running backs, Coach B. Finish the play, and he's doing just that. So first and ten, they are now in Etiwanda's territory. The ball is spotted at Etiwanda's 37-yard line, 10 minutes, 30 seconds, 30 
seven seconds ago in the third quarter. You have 14, Delgado in the backfield. It is a fake read option, get sweep. He keeps the ball, and he goes off tackle. He picks up about four yards on the play. So you're looking at second down and about six yards to go. Yeah, Coach B, it's, uh, uh, again, the quarterback, uh, this is a sophomore quarterback we're talking here. Delgado is doing a great job of really kind of playing the Etowan de, uh, defensive end and figuring out, hey, if you go, if you attack the running back, I'm going to run it on you. He's in the shotgun, two receivers to the left, one to uh, his running back to the right. He sends the H back in motion, hands the ball off to number 25, Aldridge. And Aldridge does a off tackle run, sweep to the left, and he picks up about three yards. So you're going to be looking at about third down and about five or six to go. If you like running back play, you're seeing, you're seeing a very good display of it uh, for the Oak Hill Bulldogs as well as on the other side of the football for the Edwanda Eagles. Some really, really good play out of both the running backs. So the ball is spotted at about the 32-yard line. We're in the gun, two receivers to your left. You have your ace back right behind the, right behind the, uh, the, uh, the, tight, the tackle, and it is a sweet It is a fumble. It is a fumble, and I tell you, Oak Hills has had some trouble tonight with the ball. Yeah, well, well, you know, to, to date it hasn't really been their skill players, but that play right there is one of those plays where he's, you know, you know, he's trying to pull that that ball back from the running back. It wasn't done on time, but again, good poise by Mr. Delgado because again, as a sophomore quarterback, he had enough presence of mind to hop on that football, jump right on the ball, and that's big for third down because it takes them out of it takes out of their momentum. So they have their punter back there, so their punter is ready to punt the ball. So it's fourth down, they decide to give up, and, they, uh, and they're going to go ahead and punt the that's ball. That's Davis. That's, that's all around Davis again right there, Coach B. So, uh, so I was about to say Coach Davis. So Davis goes ahead <laughs> and punts the ball, number 13 for the Oak Hill Bulldogs, and it takes the Oak Hill bounce. Yes, it bounces it down at the 15, Oof. and it trickles down to about the nine-yard line. Yeah. So Etiwanda is going to be deep. The eight, I say the eight, deep, exactly. They're going to be deep in their own territory. Well, again, what we've seen out of of, out of Tommy uh, uh, McDonald, or yeah, yeah, Tommy McDonald, what we've seen out of him, we've seen him being able to at least manage the game. He's not a quarterback that's going to put the Etiwanda Eagles in jeopardy. So he's conscious what he has to do with the football. So let's see how these Eagles get themselves out of that sticky situation. Indeed, with eight minutes and 27 seconds to go in the third quarter, Tommy McDonald trots onto the field. He got the play from Coach Davis. Coach Davis saw something he liked. He has a spread formation. He has two, three, two receivers to his left, one to his right. He has his running back, Cashmere, in the backfield. He hands the ball off. It is a read option. And Cashmere, it looks like he picked up maybe a yard on that play. Yeah, so Oak Hill was ready for that. Yeah, they were. And, and, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, Coach B, um, uh, up front, the linemen and the linebackers are playing very good football. Yes, they are. Eight minutes and three seconds to go. It is going to be second and about nine from the 10-yard line. And that was a and, – and, and in the gun – and it looks like McDonald was targeting number 11, and 11 was Devin Jean- Jenny, um, and it was an incomplete pass. So you're looking at third down. The ball is spotted at about the nine-yard line, their own nine-yard line. So yeah, third and about nine to go. McDonald's in the gun. He has Cashmere in the backfield with him. He has three receivers to his left, one receiver to his right. He's in the shotgun. And let's see what he's going to pull off. And it is a draw play to Cashmere. He picks up five yards, ten yards. And he got that it. play, it looks like Cashmere. He got yes, it. Yes, he got the first down. Wow. So he got the ball. He needed about nine. Looks like he picked up about 12. So he got the ball out to the 20 yard line. And Coach B, that's what you want to do. Yeah, and I think they're, they're, they're starting to do this. And I saw him doing a little bit in the first half. I wonder, since they're having a size issue, spread the ball out and see if they can get inside those big guys. Spread, a spread formation once again, two receivers to your right, two to your left. McDonald keeps the ball. He fakes the ball to Cashmere, and that was a great fake on first down from the 20. He picks up about a yard, so it's going to be second down and nine. Yeah, Coach B, again, they're going to have to, to speed it up, but again, spread the ball out, get in between the tackles with those running backs. Yes, so Coach, Coach Davis calls in the play to McDonald. He has Cashmere again in the backfield, two receivers to his left, two receivers to his right, and, and McDonald keeps the ball. Direct snap, he picks up five yards. He picks up six yards. He picks up about five or six yards on that second down play, 
So Coach Davis saw something he saw he liked in the middle. Well, what's happening, Coach B, is now when you're seeing the Oak Hill uh, lineman lineup, they had four down there at first. Now they only have three, which is what you want. You want, yeah, I mean, because again, you, there's too many of those big guys up there. They had, they were able to get no penetration, third down, and a, a roughly under five. Back in the in the shotgun, had two receivers left, one to your right. He hands the ball off to number five, Cashmere. And Cashmere picks up about on third down. He needed four. It looks like he picked up about four. Good spot, Coach B. That was a, again, that was an Edouard the Eagle spot right there. Uh, but again, the, the, you know what you what you what you what you're judged on, uh, Coach B, is what you do on third down, and they're making that's two two big third down conversion. So first and 10 from the 30-yard line, from their own 30-yard line, 6 minutes, 28 seconds to go. He has three release. He's in the shotgun, three receivers to his left, two, uh, one receiver to his right. He has Cashman in the back here. And he keeps the ball, McDonald, 5 yards, 10 yards. There so we go. Up about 10 yards on first and 10 from the 30. It looks like he, and Edwin has got something going with 16 to 15 seconds to go. It looks like he picked up about 13 yards. So the ball is now going to be spotted at their own 43-yard line there. And they're going fast once again. They're in the gun. McDonald's in the gun with Cashmere. Three receivers to his left, one to his right. He hands the ball off to Cashmere. It looks like Cashmere is right there. Yeah, it looks like that. Yeah. Uh, Coach, what I like about what I'm seeing right now out of, out of uh, again, uh, uh, junior quarterback Tommy McDonald is now he's not taking the hit. He's getting out of bounds. Or oh, he's he's getting on the ground before the big hits come, which is you know which is going to keep him in the football game. Cashmere, Dina, and McDonald are in the backfield. Three receivers to his left, one to his right. He hands the ball off to Cashmere. Cashmere, and they're they're, they're they see something they like. It's a it's a quick little dive right up the gut, and they're they're working something. They see something that they like. Again, Coach B, that's the they're spreading the, the offense out some, and now you're only having to deal with three of those Oak Hill linemen which were causing them problems. I mean, big, big problems uh, before. However, it looks like they're going to go four. Yeah, they're going to go three down linemen, and uh, it looks like a linebacker on the edge. So with that, once again, on third down, Etiwanda runs a spread formation, two receivers to your right, two to your left. It was uh, McDonald and, Ka- and Kashmir. Kashmir Dina. In the backfield, and McDonald hands the ball off to number five, Kashmir. He picks up about two or three yards. So it's fourth down. The ball is about now they're in Oak Hill's territory at the 49-yard line. They've got about two yards to go to get to the first down with four minutes, 58 seconds to go in the third quarter. Etiwanda Eagles are leading the Oak Hill Bulldogs 17-14. Etiwanda, they still have their players out on the field. So they have McDonald's. It, it looks like it's getting the call in from Coach Davis. He's in a spread formation. Two receivers to his right, two receivers to his left. Cash Dina in the backfield with McDonald, and it is a handoff. And he picks up nice. five yards, ten yards. So on fourth down, he needed about three yards. He picked up about ten. What a move, Coach B. Is that and, demoralizing? Well, it is because, again, you, you know, look at this. The, the last two series, one third down conversion, another third down conversion, and now a fourth down conversion. I like what I see out of these guys, Coach B. And again, that clock is running. We're down to four minutes now, Coach B. Four minutes and 20 seconds ago, Etiwanda has the ball spotted at Oak Hill's 39 yard line. McDonald's in the backfield. He has three receivers to his right. He has one receiver to his left. He's in the shotgun in the spread formation. So he looks out, he's barking out his signal. Number 14, McDonald, he, it is a option. He keeps the ball, and he picks up. It looks like he picked up maybe a yard or two. Yeah, Coach B. You know, you want to. So on that play, on first down play, the ball was spotted at the 39-yard line. It looks like McDonald picked up maybe two yards. Yeah. On that on that play, so you're looking at second down and about eight to go with three minutes and 48 seconds to go. You know, one thing that I want to talk about is Chili's of North Montana. Get your baby, baby, baby back ribs. A proud Uh-oh. sponsor of Etiwanda Eagles football. McDonald's in the gun. Three receivers to his left, two to his right. It's a quick toss to number five, and that was Cashmere. He was out in. The, he went out into the flat, and that was a quick little pitch and toss. And on that play, he picked up about five yards. So you're looking at third down mm-hmm. and about a yard. Yeah, Coach B. Third and manager. Yeah, and, and see, and, and I was just gonna say that what they've been able to do, Coach B, is keep it third, fourth manageable, and that's that's all you can ask for out of your offense, Coach B. Edwanda goes in the power formation. They, they go under center. McDonald goes under center. He has Cashmere in the backfield. Is the quarterback keeper, and it looks like the bush push may have worked. Uh oh. So, and it looks like there was some extracurricular activity after the play. 
But on that, we'll see where the spot is, and it looks like Etiwanda may have it. Got an eagle spot right there, Coach B. That looks like it's a first. It is a first and ten. Let's do it again. So, Coach Davis, I don't know what he did at halftime. He really coached them boys up. What? They're playing some football. Well, they're playing tempo football, Coach B. They're playing keep away. With a, with a team like the Oak Hill Bulldogs who was shown they can drive the ball to the field, you got to be able to do that. Back McDonald's in the spread option. He runs a – it was a read option that he ran. He was in the shotgun with Cashmere Cena. He had one receiver to his right, two to his left. It was a – he kept the ball – on the read option, and they picked up about a yard with two minutes and 13 seconds to go from Etiwan to Eagle Stadium and Rancho Cucamonga. The ball is spotted at about Oak Hill's 28-yard line. You have second down and about eight to go. You have, once again, you have McDonald in the backfield, Cashmere with him, two receivers to his right, to his left. He, he, oh, man, there is a flag on the face. He was, spot, he was targeting number 82, Jordan Porter, on a quick slant. And there was a flag on the play. Now, we haven't seen Tommy McDonald make too many dangerous throws, but there were three Bulldogs, one in the back of the receiver, number 82, and there was two linebackers right there. Very, very dangerous play, and those are the plays right there that could turn the game around, potentially, if the, if the Bulldogs were able to make a play on it. Indeed. So the Etiwanda Eagles, with that pass interference, they're marching the ball down. It looks like they're going to have the ball at about the 14-yard line. So it's going to be first and 10 from the 14-yard line. One minute, 56 seconds to go. Etowan to Eagles. McDonald, he hands the ball off. It's a quick dive. Number six, Cashmere. Oh, five, wow. Right Cashmere will not oh, be denied. Wow. Cashmere Dina with one minute and 47 seconds to go. Cashmere Dina did a run off of tackle and got right into that end zone. Coach B. Number seven, who is one of our highlights, and that's Griffin, who goes both ways, senior, a uh, corner, he took a hit. And, 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 again, for Dina to be able to absorb that hit and still maintain and get in there and make a move and get to the end zone, that's special, Coach B. Yes, yeah, and that was a big run. It was a 14-yard run. Cashmere, Dina, it was a run off tackle. It was a power run to the left side of the, uh, of the, uh, the line and he would not be denied. Like you said, he took a couple of shots on his way to the end zone, but he said, I have reservations for six, so get out of my way. Hey, Coach B, I was going to say, if they scored uh, seven points right here, that puts an, um, an, a, an immense amount of pressure on the Artie Allen-led Oak Hill Bulldogs, Coach B. And our guy, the hardest working man on the team, number 77, Diego Garcia, extra point is good. So that's going to put, with one minute and 47 seconds to go, that's going to put your Etowan, the Eagles, up 24 to 14 on homecoming night. I mean, this is nothing like last year. Last year was an absolute nail biter. Oh, yeah. No. Well, I mean, again, this has been a lot of back and forth. Because, uh, again, if I'm, you know, uh, you know, what we saw, we saw Oak Hills Bulldogs having their way with the Eagles early in the game. And now you're seeing, now you're kind of starting to see that the coin flips. Now the Eagles are imposing their will on the Oak Hill Bulldogs. And it's one of those things, you think about it, two botched uh, uh, special team plays Whoa. are what turned this game around. And, and, and again, Coach B, we, you know this, you got to play mistake-free football. If you're, if you're looking to come in here and upset these folks on their homecoming, and, and, you know, and, and, and Coach Davis has, has these Eagles coached up, you got to make sure you, uh, you, you complete those plays. And you're listening to the Fox Sports 1350 Game of the Week with Coach B. And Eternal, when it comes to Inland Empire Sports, you know the conversation starts right here, live on Fox Sports 1350. Number 77, Diego Garcia is kicking the ball off in the 40-yard line, and he pushes it right Another up. Oh, so it, looks it might like be offsides, Coach B. There, and with that, well, and with, when he kicked the ball, there was a flag. It's offsides. Do you make him re-kick it? Well, if you do, you don't you don't kick that again. You don't kick the you don't kick the pooch punt. You make I mean because again we've seen we've seen the, the the kicker being able to put the ball deep in the end zone. So I think that's what you're looking for here. Kick it deep, um, but again I understand it clearly what Coach Davis is doing, especially when you've been able to get two turnovers off of that kick. And that's one thing that goes back to scouting. So Coach Davis and his staff of the Edwin the Eagles must have looked at some film and saw something. There's no doubt about that. So Diego Garcia. Uh, he is ready to kick the ball off after the five-yard penalty. He'll be kicking the ball off at the 35. Yard yeah, line. I think they're going to kind of try to uh, pin him back now, Coach B. So we'll see. And he has a big leg. Nope. No. He pushes it right back you up gotta again. you got to be kidding me. And it bounces. Oh, wow. And it looks like there's oh, a my. drum for the ball. Wow. I know Coach Artie Allen is livid. So let's see. Wow. Who, huh. who recovered that ball? 
So it looks like it looks like uh, Oak Hills was able to get the ball, and they were able to get it. So with one minute and 44 seconds to go, the Oak Hill Bulldogs will take over the ball, down 24 to seven to the Etowan that he was on homecoming. Here's the situation, Coach B, and, I, and, and again, this, I, this just came to me, Coach B. The last, the two kicks that they got turnovers on, those weren't pooch kicks. Those are legitimate kicks right there that just bounced off of them. So obviously, Coach Davis said, "Hey, they're having a problem handling the football in the front there." So they kicked the ball again, and clearly they haven't addressed the problem in terms of how to corral around the football during the kickoff. So Oak Hills comes back. Their quarterback, Michael Delgado, he's in the shotgun with his running back, number 25. And it is a sweep to the left, and it is a handoff to his quarterback, and that's going to be Aldrich. And Aldrich picks up on a sweep left. He picks up about three yards on the play. And, again, Aldrich has been the all-around back here, getting a lot of work, obviously still being spelled uh, by Griffin, number seven, the senior. But, again, we're talking about a kid who, who picked up 139 yards. He's probably going to have another 100-yard game tonight, Coach B. And Delgado's back in the gun. He has his running back, Aldridge, and it's another sweep left. They really see something they like in that play. He was in the gun oh, wow. with three receivers to his right, one receiver to his left, and he runs the ball. He gives the ball once again to number 25, Aldridge, and that's been their bread and butter tonight. Hey, Coach B, the Aldridge ran the ball so hard, the referee had to take a hop, skip, and a jump to get out the way. Mm-hmm. He's impressive, Coach B. I've been impressed by his. I mean, and again, we talked to Coach Artie Allen before the game started, and he said, look, out for Aldridge. He reminds you of an Adrian Peterson. I, I, I would say the same thing, Coach B. And I think that's why he was saying he's a downhill runner because you don't see a lot of you know a lot of herky jerkiness from him. He's just going to give he, he, he lines you up and shows you number twenty five, and, and you got to deal with it. So with one minute and seven seconds to go, we're live from Etowanda Eagles Stadium in Rancho Cucamonga for Etowanda Eagles versus Oak Hill Bulldogs. Friday night live spot for 13 game of the week. It is a straight dive. He hands the ball out from the gun. He hands the ball off to number 25. And once again, that's who we were just talking about, Aldridge. Aldridge, I, I don't know how many yards he has tonight, but it's, it's plenty. Oh, there's no doubt. It's, 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 it's plus 100. There's no question about that. Again, we're talking about uh, Armis Aldridge, senior running back, uh, 5'10", 165 pounds, last week against the, uh, 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 the Palmdale Falcons, 139 yards. And once again, they're in the gun, and, and Delgado pitches the ball to number 26. There's flags all over the place. They were in the gun. Yeah. They had two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. Aldridge was in the backfield. And before that pass was even completed, the referee was in his passing motion with his flag. Well, it looked like because there's blocking taking place while the ball was in the air. And then there's another flag being thrown. Oh, yeah, unsportsmanlike. Oh, oh, helmet. So that's, uh, oh, wow. that, that's the one thing you, you can't you know, lose. You can't lose the game off penalties and losing your, your composure. Right, and, and I, we, we hope this isn't offsetting penalties right here, Coach B, because that would negate a huge penalty uh, against the, uh, the Bulldogs that I'm certain the Eagles would have been excited about. So we'll see. Yes. Offsetting. Yes. So there were some offsetting penalties. Wow. So, no, well, they're marching back, so, no. Wait I, a minute. Is, are, those, are that offsetting? So, it's, so we will see what's going on. So we'll get an explanation from the uh, – So we have – it looks like what I hear, and, again, we got some good folks here in the booth that are helping us out a little bit because it's kind of hard. It's, it's homecoming night, Coach B. But what I hear is that it was two penalties uh, actually on the offense. And that has to be – I mean, I, I'm certain Coach Artie Allen is, is, is sick about that, He's Coach. He's got to be. So with 22 seconds to go – in the third quarter, the Oak Hills Bulldogs are marching in the wrong direction. So the ball, we're, we're going to see where they're going to spot the ball. If they, once again, the Etiwanda Eagles are up 24-14 to 14 over the Oak Hill Bulldogs. And I'll tell you right now, with uh, Coach Davis, I think he made the right decision with those jerseys. We talked about that on IE Sports oh, yeah. on Fox Sports 13 when he decided to put the gold in the jersey. Well, he said that was very important. Uh, and, again, you know, it, it looks great. Uh, you know, they're, they're coached up. I mean, and, and what we – I tell you what, and, you know, as a coach, you never want to jump the gun, but he said this – they're able to come out with a victory tonight. It would be a huge boost to the Etiwanda Eagles football team. And it, it, it is first down and 30. I think they, uh, they spotted the ball in Oak Hill. Wow. Uh, so it's going to be first down – no, have, third down and third – or second down. Second down, our, our coach, 
our, our we're waiting for our Dallow guy. Yeah. Hey, coach, coach, second I, down I, and third. They get so they got two penalties. The, the Bulldogs were penalized twice on that play, and the ball is spotted at the 22 yard line. And Delgado is looking. He's running for his life back there. He's looking. He's looking. He's scrambling. He's scrambling. Oh, wow. And he scrambled about 20 yards to pick up about five. Coach so B. he was running out there. Yeah, I saw uh, one of the Bulldogs, number 10. He was out there in the flat. That's Jordan. Uh, oh, laying. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> uh, and, and Jordan was out there by himself. But, again, Coach B, a lot of pressure got on Delgado, and he couldn't get his feet set to make that throw downfield. So he had to ultimately revert back to what he's been doing most of the game is getting on his high horse and running the football. So that is going to come to the conclusion of the third quarter. So we're looking at – so we're going into the fourth quarter. So we're looking at 24-14 to 14 for the Etiwanda Eagles in the lead here for homecoming night. And what I heard right now, Coach B – 25-plus yards were taken away on that. One was a holding. The other one was on a, one, unsportsmanlike. The holding penalty carries 10 yards, unsportsmanlike 15. So that's what you saw there. Yes. yes. And, so, and, 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 Coach B, this may be – it very well may be a player that may have been ejected out of the game, Coach B. Yes. Oh, so, my. So they spotted that ball. When you looked at it, they spotted it in Oak Hill. Oh, yeah. No, it was, it was, it was near the 15 freeway going towards Victorville, Coach B. Yes. Yeah, so that's uh, my, so my. that's one of the things you you don't want to see. You don't want to see kids lose their composure. No, lose no, their no. And it looks like this might have been one of the one of their star guys too. Yes. So when you look at it, you look in the fourth quarter. So it's twelve minutes. Uh, and we're going to get twelve minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Um, so so we're uh, so we're ready. So I know the Etiwanda Eagles are ready for some football. Indeed. So what do you see out there? Well, right now, again, we see a total flip-flop, Coach B. Uh, We now see uh, uh, the Etiwanda Eagles now controlling the line of scrimmage, whereas all of the first half, that was the Oak Hill Bulldogs doing that, Coach B. So Delgado and Garcia are in the backfield. Delgado is going deep. He's looking, oh, wow. What a great catch. What a catch by number... That was a number absolute 11. bomb. So that was number 11, and that was Sherman Jamar Weston. 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 And, and that was a huge play. Is there a flag on the play? Is there some laundry? There's, and it looks like, oh, my, my. And there is a flag. There's got to be because he ran over the DB. Well, he pushed well that, him off and ran him over. Well, no, I, I mean, to me, I thought, he, I thought the receiver made a great play, but there, it looked like there was some action taking place away from the play, Coach B. Wow. And which, which would be just, I mean, tragic for the Oak Hill uh, Bulldogs. So and that, that's what it is. And that was a 8-yard uh. play that's negated. So it, it seems like the Oak Hill uh, Bulldogs are starting to lose their composure a little bit here. Yeah. And I know Artie Allen, he's, uh, he's not happy about that, Coach B. So with 11 minutes and 51 seconds, that was about an 80-yard bomb that was now negated. And, you know, Coach B, and, you know, hey, shut me up. I mean, we were talking about uh, does Delgado have the arm strength. Clearly he has the arm strength to get the ball done. I think what the problem has been for him, hasn't had enough time to get his feet set to make that kind of throw. So now the ball is spotted at their own 23-yard line, third down and about 30 to go. So it, and after a play like that, that's kind of deflating. If, oh, if, yeah, if you're the uh, Oak Hills Bulldog, what are you doing that? Well, and Coach, especially right now when it's fourth quarter, Coach B, you know, uh, again, Artie Allen's going to coach Artie Allen's going to have to really kind of get them back motivated again to kind of get to you know keep the ball rolling. So we're going to see what kind of composure the sophomore quarterback has in terms of you know making a play like that and then coming back and having to respond. Uh, indeed, and it looks like the referees are having a conference, yeah. and they want to discuss what's going on. 11 minutes, 51 seconds to go. Clock the Edelwanda Eagles once again are up 24-14 to 14. homecoming night. Everyone's yeah. excited. Everyone's festive. When you look down here at the Edelwanda Eagles sideline, they are jammed up over here. We look at the red zone, which is the student section. The red zone is all fired up, so... We know some people here at the stadium are listening to the game on the iHeartMedia app. Oh, wait, we see the headphones. Oh, wow, there's more. There's, there's more yards going, and it looks like that's going to be a 15-yarder. So I, I wonder how that happened. So and that, I, don't, I don't see, I don't see uh, Artie Allen saying much about it, so it's clear they knew about this. So Oak Hill is back in the shotgun. You have 
Delgado and Aldridge in the backfield. Three receivers to his right, one to his left, and it's a quick pitch and catch. He picks up five yards. He picks up ten yards. Woo. He picks up oh, man. 15 yards, and he fumbles the ball. It is picked up and recovered by number six, and that's Andre Grayson. He picks the ball up at the 40-yard line after a huge play. Etiwanda picks up the ball. And now it's going to be first and ten. The Etiwanda is already in Oak Hill territory. Coach B. They'll be at the fourth. Coach B, you teach your runners. He, that was, I mean, uh, the receiver from the Oak Hill Bulldogs made a great play getting across field, get some yardage, because it was, I mean, it was second in, in a Vegas trip, Coach B. I mean, it was a lot of yardage they needed to get. But in the process of trying to get additional yardage, got a little loosey-goosey with the football and gave it up. Yes, they did. So, Etowan is in business. They start the ball at Oak Hills 40. They're in the gun, and it's a handoff to Cashmere Dina. Oh, and he takes a big shot in the backfield, so he loses a couple of yards on that play. He was looking for the hole to get to. I see his coaches, are they're fired up. His coaches are fired up telling them I, it looks like he may have gone through the wrong hole, but when you look at it, it's going to be second down. He lost about four yards. So you're looking at second down and about 14 on the play and that was, in the shotgun. And that was Dimitri Skiles, senior defensive tackle, 6'0", about, roughly about 6 feet, 260 pounds, making that play like right there. Oh, man. And, and, and again, for him, to, for him to be in that size and to move like that, yeah, this kid, he, he, he's, he's good. Yes, he is, indeed. So the Etiwanda Eagles are going to, they're, they're still in business. So they, you're looking at second down at about 14. The ball is going to be spotted about the 44-yard line, 11 minutes, 8 seconds to go in the fourth. A lifetime, really, though, Coach. I mean, a lot of time. But, again, what I, one thing I see about the Coach Davis-led Eagles, he is pacing himself. He's not, you know, look, they're taking their time. You see Tommy McDonald, he's out there pacing himself and making sure that the Etiwanda Eagles take some time off the clock. Now, one thing, you're a Riverside native. This is a company that was born and raised in, in the Inland Empire. A company uh -oh. I'm sure you're, you're, you're familiar with. Wait, wait, wait. Nader Brothers. Hey, man, let me tell you something. Well, I'm <laughs> They're a proud sponsor of your Etiwanda <laughs> Eagles serving Southern, serving Southern California since 1936. <laughs> Nader Brothers. And remember to follow the Etiwanda Eagles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Get to know your Eagles. So the Etiwanda Eagles are back in the gun. McDonald's in the gun. He has Cashmere Dina in the backfield with him. Three, two receivers to the left, one to the left. And he hands the ball. It's a fake. He keeps the ball. And he is that a different is, quarterback, Coach? He is covered up. LJ oh, wow, yeah. Makes, yeah. And there's another flag That's unsportsmanlike on, on Yeah, another unsportsmanlike, Coach B. I saw it. So, wow, that is big. Yeah, you know, right now, Coach B, I – so it's an unsportsmanlike. Coach B, and, and you see, the, and you see the Oak Hill Bulldogs. They're talking to him. Coach B is like, if I'm Artie Allen, I'm going to talk to these kids and say, hey, they're throwing the flag out there. You cannot do anything excessive. You got to play the game straight up. Otherwise, you could you could jeopardize being kicked out of this game, Coach B. Yes, yes, indeed you can. So with that, that's going My to give goodness. Etiwanda a first down with 10 minutes and 57 seconds to go. Etiwanda's up. No, it doesn't give them a first because they lost some yards. Right. So it's 24 to 14, Etiwanda. So you're looking at third down and really manageable, three yards. Yeah, Coach, but we've seen almost, I mean, uh, the, the Bulldogs have given up almost 100-plus yards in penalties, Coach B. So, oh, so Etiwanda is stacked. They have two receivers to the left, two to your right, and Cash Medina gets the handoff. He loses about a yard on yeah. third down, so they had two receivers on the back on both sides of of uh, McDonald. So yep. the re receivers are stacked on top of each other, indeed. so you have them right in front of each other. Yeah, indeed, Coach B. And one of the things that we're seeing, and this is unfortunate for the Artie, uh, Artie Allen led uh, Bulldogs, is that they're actually playing good football, but again, a few players playing a little reckless. And they're getting some laundry thrown on. They're going to go for it. So Ed Another Wanda, the offense is there. So you have McDonald in the back. He pumps face, and he's going over the top. And that was a incomplete pass. Wow. So McDonald was targeting number 81, and number 81 for the Etiwanda Eagles is going to be Mark Perry, the sophomore we talked about earlier. But you, if you think that's not a bad play to do, no. Etiwanda had the ball at about the 38, or, I'm sorry, 34 yard line. It, it, it's like a punt because you're in no man's land. Well, Coach B, because that that would have been roughly about a 50 yard kick, 45 plus. Which is, you know, which is like right, right at, you know, a little bit outside of uh, Garcia's range. It's Garcia, right, the kicker? Correct. Uh, a little bit outside of Garcia's range. So they elected to go with the stack set. I tell you what, if number 11, uh, Shamar Weston, turns around a little quicker, 
it could be going another way. Exactly. And and Delgado is in the backfield. He has uh, he has Aldridge in the backfield. It's a sweet one tackle. Left. Number Two 25. Tackles. And he and as you said, he on his way to about eight yards. He breaks about eight tackles with ten minutes and five seconds to go. Etowan is up twenty-four to fourteen over the Oak Hills Bulldogs. And that's one thing that, that, that Coach Artie Allen can say and hang his hat on tonight is his offense is clicking. There's no doubt about that. So I mean, he has stuff to build on. And again, which is why Coach Davis was concerned about these Bulldogs. It, it, they are a good football team. Got to work on the little small mistakes, though. And they're in the gun, and once again, Aldridge does a sweep to the right, and he needed about three yards. He picked up four on that on that second down play, so he picks up the first and ten. The ball is now spotted at their own 45-yard line, nine minutes, 35 seconds to go in the fourth and final quarter. The Oak Hill Bulldogs are working with something down ten points. There's no doubt about it, Coach B. And let me tell you something. The other one, the Eagles have to play stout right here because it's not like they can't turn this game around. We've seen it happen with the other one, uh, uh, Eagles, is get two plays in a, uh, two touchdowns in the last two minutes. Delgado is in the backfield. He is in the gun. He has two receivers to his left, one to his right. He does a quick pitch, pitches up about three or four yards, and it was yeah. a pitch to number four, and that's going to be, we don't have a name for it. Uh, number four is Jack Campbell. Jack Campbell. Well, I don't know if that's, yeah, that's number four who I have on my yes, list. Jack Campbell, yeah, yes, and, you and, are right. And one of the things, Coach, I see Artie Allen telling him, speed the pace up. So we back in the gun you have, and they do that sweet play once again to number 25, Aldrich. They all day. In the gun. All day, Aldrich. <laughs> and he has, he's, every time they run that play, he's picking up yards. So with eight minutes, 42 seconds to go in the fourth and final quarter, the Oak Hill Bulldogs are really working the ball. Now they have the ball. They're in Etiwanda's territory. They're at about the, third, uh, up the 44-yard line, first and 10. They're doing very well. They're down by 10 points, but they got something going. They're in, once again, they're in the gun. You have Aldridge and Diego De Garcia. I'm, I'm sorry, and Delgado in the backfield. It is a sweep to the right, and they then they, they lost. The defense finally stretched them out. Yeah. and they lost the yard. And Even good, though he ran eight. Exactly. <laughs> good, good call on that. And I, let me tell you something. This kid Aldridge is, is in good shape. He's in good shape. It's the it's the fourth quarter. He's still running the ball like he's on a mission. And, uh, and, again, I mean, if I'm Artie Allen, you know, that's all you can, uh, you can expect out of your running back right there, out of your senior running back, probably one of the team captains, is being able to run the ball like that at the fourth quarter. So second and ten on the play. Uh, and, and you have, once again, is, is, is they're in the, the, uh, the shotgun, and they hand the ball off to wow. Aldridge. Aldridge picks up about four or five yards on the play. So with eight minutes and nine seconds to go, the uh, the Oak Hill Bulldogs are playing some good football. It's third down and about six or seven to go. Indeed, and they're and they're just ha- and they're they're content with a, a you know living and dying by the all day Aldridge effect and giving this kid the ball. I mean, I mean, he has I'd say thirty plus carries, Coach B, and the game's not even over yet. It, it is not because the ball is spotted at the forty yard line with about third and six to go. They are in the gun. You have two receivers to your left, one to your right, Aldridge. And Del, Delgado in the backfield, quick pitch, and he pitched that ball, and he picked up about the five yards that he needed on that play. So that was a big play, and it was spotted to number 11 for, and that's going to be Sh- Shamar Weston. And Coach B, and right now we just got word uh, Aldridge, 24 carries, 143 yards. Wow. I mean, it, it, more yards than he was able to get against uh, uh, the Pondell Falcons, showing up big tonight. So once again, you have Delgado in the gun. He has Aldridge in the backfield. You have three receivers to your left, one receiver to your right. Oak Hill is moving the ball to the north. They're trying to get into the end zone. The ball is spotted at the 35, and it looks like Aldridge is going to squeeze in there. He's actually, that I take it, that was Griffin. That yeah. was a replacement and running back, and Griffin was able to pick up about three yards on first down. So you're looking at second down and about seven on the play. The ball is spotted at about the 32-yard line, seven minutes, ten seconds ago. The Edwanda Eagles are still up 24-14. Clock's not moving, Coach B, so they got to still get the job done. Plenty of time, though. The Oak Hill Bulldogs are in the gun. He hands the ball off once again to Griffin, and Griffin drags people, and he picks up about three yards. So on that play, uh, Joseph Griffin, he's coming in. They're not losing a beat with well, him. Well, again, Coach Artie Allen told us before the game, they're going to spell – uh, they're going to spell Aldridge with Griffin, and uh, and again, Griffin's been showing us he's you know ha- I've seen him have some challenges on defense, 
But my goodness, he can run the football, Coach B. Third down and six to go. The ball is spotted at Etowan, the 30-yard line. Oak Hill is in the gun. They send a receiver in motion. It is a sweep to the right. But the quarterback fakes it, and the quarterback keeps it. So on that play, they, there was a keeper for the quarterback, and that is going to be Michael Delgado. And, you know, he was a wide receiver free safety. He's looking pretty good at quarterback. Oh, no, no, I'm impressed. I mean, Artie Allen, they got a, they found a diamond in the rough there. I'm, You know, obviously we oh, – go ahead, Coach B. Oh, no, no. I was yeah. going to say it's decision time. So oh, yeah, it first is. First down, the ball is at the 30. It looks like the decision is made. The offense is still out there. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, unless they got a kicker, they can kick it 35 yards, <laughs> I, maybe 40. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if they got Mr. Garcia on their team. And it looks like Coach Davis said he wants to make some adjustments. Now, yeah. in this situation, is this a play where you pooch kick it and catch them off guard, or are you going to go for it? Coach B, I say right now, you're dealing with a high school football team. Five minutes. There's no two-minute warning, Coach B. You know, I, I believe that the Bulldogs have already used maybe one of their time. It looks like they, yeah, one of the timeouts have already gone. They only have two minutes. To, to, uh, uh, two minutes. The clock keeps running, Coach B. So if, uh, if I'm Coach Artie Allen, I'm going for this. There's no, there's no question about it. And you're right. That timeout was called by the Bulldogs. It wasn't called by Coach. So Coach Artie Allen and the Bulldogs called that timeout, not Coach Davis and the Eagles. But on this situation, it looks like maybe they, did, they saw something they didn't like and they decided to go ahead and talk about it. So with five minutes, 57 seconds to go on homecoming night, the right. Edelwanda Eagles are still up. 24 to 14. Well, and in this exciting game, Coach B, this is the biggest play for the Oak Hill Bulldogs. Indeed. Fourth down, the ball spot at the 30. They got about five yards to go, and let's see what they can do. They've been getting that, and they decide it's a fake pass, and it looks like they no, stopped wow. him. And you know, if you think about that, was that eternal? Was that a mistake? Because that sweep they've been running has gotten them five or six yards all night, and they try to get two. And Coach B, again, we're talking about a quarterback, Coach B, who threw it nine times last week, Coach B. So I'm, and again, he's shown us he's able, he's capable and able to throw the football. But again, it looked like it was a it was a botched play. He was he was going for the wheel route, uh, but I saw complete people open on the left hand side there. He just had, didn't have enough time to get it over there. So it is a turnover on down Huge turnover. for the Oak Hill Bulldogs, and it's five minutes and 50 seconds to go. And the way that Coach Davis has been running the ball yeah. with his team, I can see him just eating this clock. Oh, I mean, there's no way. I mean, if I'm De Coach Davis, I'm just chewing this thing up, Coach B. And there is a stoppage on the play, so we will see what that call is. Is there a penalty on the play? Let's see what we have. Let me fall start. Ball start on the Edo. That's not the way to start no. the drive because now you're going to push yourself back five yards. And, Coach B, what you do not want to do right here is have a turnover. Mm -hmm. Inside that red zone, Coach B, I mean, they're five yards outside of the red zone, Coach B, but a turnover right here, oh, my, the that ball. could be critical. So the ball is spotted at Edowana's own 24-yard line. Tommy McDonald gets under the gun. He's going in the power formation. One receiver left, one receiver right. Hands the ball off to Kashmir. They go in the power formation. Kashmir picks up on first down. He picks up about two yards. So it's going to be second down and still about 13 to go with five minutes, 38 seconds to go. So what do you do in this situation? Second down, you've got about 13 yards to go. This is a hey, Coach B, a tough situation. But you know what, Coach? You cannot afford uh, to stop the clock. You have to keep the clock going right here, Coach B. Any stoppage of the clock right here is a victory for the Oak Hill Bulldogs, especially if they don't get a first down. So, so keep, keep it. running the ball. Oh, yes, sir. So in this situation, it's ten, ten, uh, down 10 points. Is, is the clock starting to become a factor? There's no doubt about it, Coach B. If I'm Marty Allen, I'm, I'm worried about it. Oh. So it is a sweet play of Cashmere. He almost got stopped in the backfield where he cut back. It he looks lost like another man. He looks like he lost about three yards on that play, but there's still this is what you want. You want to run the ball, and what you said, the most important thing is the clock is still still going. But on to Oak Hill's credit, they do still have two timeouts. There's no doubt about it, Coach B. And again, you have to. I mean, you know, Artie Allen. I'm, I'm certain right now he's with his coaching staff, and they're trying to figure out how do we use these timeouts right now. Because, again, uh, the, the Eagles just lost about two more yards, Coach B. They're back in a, just a single eye formation. They have two, two receivers, one. Oh, what a ooh. They have two receivers, one on the right, one on the left. They have just a running back, Cashmere. Tommy McDonald rolls out to the left. He rolls out. He completes the pass. It is a, it's about a six- or seven-yard completion. And, that's, he, and that, go, that, was, that, was, that, that was a completion to number 87, junior tight end, Nick Kelsley. Goes about 5'11", 162 pounds, Coach B. Really good. Uh, great route. 
and way to get around and find them by, uh, by uh, Tommy McDonald. Yes. And that and the clock is still going, so with four minutes to go in the third, uh, I'm sorry, in the fourth and final quarter, the Etiwanda Eagles on homecoming night leads the Oakville Bulldogs 24-14. to And if it, time may become a factor, Diego Garcia is in the backfield and he almost gets that wow. block. He's a booming punt. It takes an Oak Hill bounce and he downs an Etiwanda number five for the Etiwanda Eagles. That's going to be Cashmere Dina. He is still out there. He's a- He's a hey, he's all around back getting getting uh maybe some unexpected minutes but he's in there he's, do, he's doing a great job with his opportunity coach B and uh, man those those uh, those bulldogs came in there and they had full intentions of blocking that kick and what a great job by Garcia staying composed coach B and getting that ball off effectively he sent the house and they stopped the uh they he downs the ball so Cash Martinez downs the ball at his own at the Oak Hills. 48-yard line. So the Oak Hills will take the ball over on down at their own 48-yard line with 3 minutes 39 seconds to go. They are down 14 to 24. First and 10 for the Oak Hill Bulldogs. Diego Garcia. Oh, I'm sorry. For the Oak Hill Bulldogs, their quarterback is going to be Michael Delgado. Is in the backfield. He has back. Uh, he has uh, all ridge back there, and he's looking deep. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. He's got oh. caught. And coming up, making a big play is going to be number 52 for the Etiwanda Eagles, and that's going to be Nick Schultz. He comes up and makes a big stop. And that's what you got to do. And, and with three minutes and 21 seconds to go, you know that Oak Hill is going to be looking deep. Yeah. So what Schultz just came up and made a play. Yeah, you, and what you can't have as a Bulldog as, as a sack is critical. That was, that was a tough and play. And he's looking deep again. Schultz is looking deep again. He's going up. He's targeting number 11. And number 11 is going to be Shamar uh, Weston. And that was an incomplete pass. So you can see now... Oak Hills know they're, they're in a hole. It's only three minutes and six seconds to go in the fourth quarter, and they're trying to make some big plays, and they're trying to catch up quick. Yeah, Coach B. You know, right now is, uh, you know, in Madden, you know, you have, you have good chances when the minutes are down like this. But in real-life football, especially when it's high school football, you only have a certain amount of plays, Coach B, that can get you 40 yards at a pop, Coach B. And so once again, in the uh, in the backfield for Oak Hill, it's, uh, it's going to be Michael Delgado, yeah, Aldridge in the backfield with us. And they went back to their bread and butter. It's a sweep to the right. It's a power run. And with that, Aldridge picks up. It was third. It was third down. So Aldridge picked up about four or five yards on that play. Yeah. So you're looking at fourth down. The ball now is spotted at Etiwanda's 48 yard line. So with this play, this has got to be a deep ball. Yeah, guarantee. And that, and that that's, that's 25 carries, roughly about 150 yards for Aldridge, Coach B. So Delgado, he's in the gun. He's looking deep. He's, it, it is a, oh, oh, man, that was a sweet route to number 13, 5, 10, 15. He, he gets the ball down to the 20 for Oak Hills, and that's going to be Mr. Kevin Davis. He picks up about 30 yards on that play. Yeah, that was – and again, you know, as we, as we mentioned during the halftime show, Coach B – uh, 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 Delgado looks for Davis. Uh, uh, last week he had half of the cu- the catches for the Bulldogs. Again, now you were starting to see why Davis had those catches because a great route to get into the inside. First and ten from Etiwanda's twenty yard line. Oak Hill is they're they're knocking on the door. They're in the red zone. Two minutes twenty nine seconds to go. Uh, and once again, their quarterback is looking back. Michael Delgado. He's, look, he's being chased. He's being chased, and he makes a incredible oh. pass. He makes the pass at number two. And they're calling him out of bounds right there, right about, oh, wow, Coach B. Andre Ross was his receiver, and that was a great play. Delgado made something out of nothing. I was he just about to, to say, scramble. that was a chess pass, Coach B. That's what you do on the side, on the hardwood. I mean, because he didn't have any play, but uh, just a great job of the receiver keeping that play alive. And Delgado, once again, he's in the gun, and he is he, – he hand off to Aldridge, and Aldridge power run you know right was. off tackle, Uh-oh. and he gets right in the end zone. Coach B, here we go, Coach B. So that was a power run with two minutes and 14 seconds to go. The Oak Hill Bulldogs punch the ball in. They're not going home yet. This no. is still a ball game, so it's no. 20 to 24. Oak Hill trails. Are they going to go for the extra point, or are they going for two? Well, Coach B, I tell you what, whatever they go with, we know for certain there's going to be an onside kick on the horizon. So, you know, if I'm – and you see Coach Davis right now. He's looking, but you better have your hands team ready to go because, I mean, 
you don't want to you don't you don't want to mess this up. So when well, you're talking about Davis out there kicking the extra point for Oak Hill, or Coach <laughs> Davis for Adam Wanda. So uh, the player Davis and he kicks the extra point. The extra point for Oak Hill is no, no good. Good. Oh wow, that's going to be big because. Now, now Oak Hill has the score touchdown to win the game. And Coach B, that was that was pressure applied by number four of the Etiwanda Eagles, L.J. Bailey, defensive back, senior, five six, only five six. Coach B, one hundred and fifty one pounds, but my goodness, he came around that corner and he shook, but uh, Mr. Davis a little bit. And I'm not talking about Mr. Coach Davis. I'm talking about Davis for the Bulldogs, just enough to put that field goal on the outside. So with two minutes and 14 seconds to go, the Etiwanda Eagles on homecoming night, they're up 24 to 20, fourth quarter, the fourth and final corner. They have their hands team out there. I see for Etiwanda number five, that's going to be Kashmir Dina is back there too. He's back there deep, but you've got to expect the onside kick. Yeah, I see number 16, Octavius Andreas. So you you got to have your your hands team up front, and here it comes, here it comes. There, oh, 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 and they missed it, Coach B. So it looks like Oak Hills was able to recover. Oh the my! Side with with kick. two timeouts, Coach B. Oh my! So yeah, but oh you know, my! But that with that, there there's so with two minutes and thirteen seconds to go. Oak Hill is in business. And like we said, last year was a nail bite. Yeah, and, and Coach B, I told you, this is a lot of football to play. And, and, and again, you know, if I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm Coach Artie here, Coach Artie Allen, hey, I'm firing my team up. We're back in business here. Indeed. So now they start off the ball is at the 46-yard line of Etiwanda. So they're already in Etiwanda. Wow. Party. With two minutes and 13 seconds to go, Oak Hill is down 20 to 24. In the backfield, you have for Etiwanda. Uh, I'm sorry, for Oak Hill, you have Michael Delgado. You have uh, Del, you have Delgado. You have there we go. That's you what you have, have to do. Uh, uh, Aldridge, and on that first play, Delgado, just like clockwork, he keeps the ball and he runs a quick quarterback keeper and picks up about three or four yards. Now, the clock is still running. Yeah. When they run the ball, the clock continues to run. That clock has begun to become a factor. One minute, 51 seconds ago. Two timeouts for the Bulldogs, Coach two B. Two timeouts for the Bulldogs. The ball is spotted at the 43-yard line. You have Delgado on the backfield. He does oh, a to the right, and it is a quick pitch to Aldridge. Aldridge and he did make up. it out of bounds. He picks up about two or three yards. In this situation, because they do have timeouts, it's not as critical. The Bulldogs, it sounds like they called a timeout with one minute and 32 seconds to go. But, if you, like you said, if you can save a timeout, you've got to save a timeout. Yeah, you got to get out of bounds right there, Coach B. I mean, because, again, as a running back, there was nothing there, Coach B. It was, it was, it was well defended. I, you know, I, I, was, I had a little question because they didn't take the running back um, going in motion. When I talked to Coach Davis, there was one thing he said. He said that the Bulldogs motion the running back and they throw to him. Right. So if, if you're the if you're the, the the linebacker there, you have to see that, and you got to be all over that football. And it was and it was close. That so was very close. You, so you're third and five. The ball is about the 41 yard line. It's it's tough for people to remember to get out of bounds because you think about right. it. Right. When I watch NFL football, same thing happened for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh my goodness! Are you going to do that to me? Like, did you just say that to me, so Coach? So with I, one, oh my goodness! With one minute and 32 <laughs> seconds to go, Oak Hills Bulldogs are third and five. We'll see what they can do. And it oh. is a – is that completed? Is that is oh, a completed – Wow. Right on the edge of the end zone, Delgado catches catch the ball at Kevin Davis. So All around Kevin Davis. So with one minute and 27 seconds to go, Oak Hill my, gets the first time. They my. needed five yards. They get six. That receiver got out of bounds. Dallas Cowboys should – to call him up. So with first, so it's just disclosure. Eternal is a Cowboys fan. So you're looking at first and ten from the 35 yard line. So the, first and ten. Let's do it again, Coach B. And, and, and you know what I'm seeing out here? I really like what I'm seeing out of this sophomore quarterback, Delgado. The, the fans are cheering defense on the Etiwanda Eagle side. They're in the gun. Delgado and Aldridge are in the backfield. Aldridge is going deep, and that is Good broken defense. up. He was targeting number 13, Kevin Davis, and it was broken up by number six, 
Andre Grayson. What a big play. And that's what you have to do. He's a captain. You have to step up and make I, these plays. Coach B, you know, just like they had, there's a lot of discrepancy with the Redskins, and they're one of their, their feature corners, uh, Josh, uh, Josh Gornet. You want to be the guy that takes the number one. If you're the feature guy, hey, I want Mr. I want Kevin Davis. I want to stop this guy because you know the football's going to him, but you got to make the plays, and he was able to do that. So you're looking at second down. The ball is spotted at Edo Wanda's 35. Oak Hill's in the gun. You have Delgado and Aldridge in the backfield. Two receivers to your left, one receiver to your right. They got their play from the sidelines, and they're ready to go. So we'll see what they do. Delgado is looking. He is getting pressure there. They forced him out of the pocket. But with that, he scrambles and picks up about two or three yards. The, the good thing about it is he got out of bounds. Yeah, an impressive athlete, Coach B. This guy, I, again, very impressive. Sophomore, Sophomore quarterback. And, and, again, for him to have that kind of presence of mind, that kind of pocket presence, hey, the pocket's closing in, and then the ability to get out of bounds, that's something special, Coach B. And I'm sure Artie Allen's excited he has him on the football team. So third down and about seven to go. The ball is spotted now at game. about the 33-yard line. Homecoming night, great game. One minute, 13 seconds to go. This is, this is the final stand for the Oak Hill Bulldogs. Delgado's in the backfield. He is getting blitzed. He can't, it's another big play. Wow. It is a it drag goes out of route. bounds. It is a nice drag route across the middle. The, the receiver gets out of bounds. One minute, six seconds to go. They are chomping down the wow. field. So now the ball is spotted at about the 24-yard line. So it's going to be first down, first and 10 from about the 24-yard line for the Oak Hills Bulldogs. One minute, six seconds to go. The Bulldogs still have a timeout, so they can still do some pay- plays across the middle if they need well, to. Well, Coach, they're doing a good job of running that drag route, Coach B. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're sending, they're sending look, looks like about two receivers out deep, and then they're dragging one roughly about 10 yards in the middle of the field, and Edwanda Eagles is having a problem stopping that. So Delgado Augustus are in the backfield. They're in the shotgun, two receivers to your left, one to the right. Delgado was looking deep. He gets the ball up in the air, and that, that was another play Ooh. that was broken up by Andre Grace, the number six for the Edwanda Eagles. They're, they're going, they're targeting that side of the field. Coach B, uh, if I'm, again, if I'm Coach Davis, I'm really going to consider, I mean, because I think they're, 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 they're uh, they're Ding them up, one on top, one on the bottom. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little bit more pressure on, on, on Davis, maybe even a little bumper runner and put a safety on top, Coach B, because he was open. So one minute to go, one minute in the fourth and final quarter. This is the first final stand. The ball, once again, we said, is it about the, about the 24-yard line. Delgado is in the gun. He hits his receiver, and his receiver, did he get out of bounds? And he got out of bounds, Coach B. Oh, my goodness. So you're looking wow. at first down. Now you're third. looking at a – did he get out of third down? No, they, nope. they uh, gave him they? the first down. They gave him the first down. Wow. So you're looking first down from about 54 the 15-yard line, 54 seconds to go. And Oak Hill, they, they found something, even with all the penalties and them trying to give the game away. They figure something out. They're in the gun. You have Delgado and Aldridge in the in the backfield. Three receivers to your left, one to the right. Hand off a sweet play to yep. to all. Time out right here, then. Yeah, they're gonna call a timeout. Oh wow, Coach B. So this, like we said, this is just like last year. This is a nail biter. And Coach B, and he's gonna let the clock go, which is shocking. So and they're gonna try to run him again, Coach B. Seconds to go, Delgado. He and they stop. Ooh. They jam him up. They what? jam him up. So Ooh. so he gets the first down. And they're trying to and they're trying to have him keep Oh wow, they're trying to have him keep running right here, Coach B. They're not gonna stop the clock. So Wait. it's first down from about the oh. it's first and goal from about the four yard line with twenty seven mm. seconds to go. No oh now they're running the clock. Wow, they got a lot of time. Wow. So Oak Hill takes no. the timeout. No, 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 no. That's uh, Etiwanda. And Wanda takes the timeout. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, Coach, but you have to take a timeout. You can't let them just run the ball like that because so they're going to score. It's first and goal from about the three-yard line, 25 seconds to go. It's, it's all or nothing. Either they get a touchdown or they lose because the field goal is not going to help. Coach B, all night, and this is going to be the determining factor, all night, Coach B, Aldridge has been able to get two yards anytime he wants it. Mm-hmm. So for right now – it's going to, I mean, you know, and, and, you know, and, and uh, the Eagles, 
they're at, you know, they're at, they're at a loss in terms of size, Coach B, right now. The size is, is not on their side. So it's going to be interesting to see if these Eagles can make a, a strong stand. I mean, literally, Coach B, with two yards to go. And this is, but this is what you go through all the summer yep. for. This is what you put all the work All the in weightlifting, for. all that, the, the, the three, the, the, you know, the hell week. Oh, man. So this is going to be, this is a big play. So in the gun, you have Aldridge and you have Del, uh, Del, and you have Aldridge and you have Delgado in the backfield. You have two receivers to your left, one to your right. It is a sweet play. They hand the ball off. And it's touchdown. And he gets in. Aldridge gets in on the sweet play with 21 And look at Ar- Artie Allen is, oh, he's excited. He's fired up over there. You got to watch out. You don't want to get a flag, but he's fired up for good reason. So on that play, and, and it, it's something we've talked about all night. Aldridge, they, they work that clock all the way down. Yes, they, 21 seconds to go. Impressive. In the fourth quarter, and they march the ball all the way down the field. And, and Coach B, the thing, you got to think about this. Etiwanda, two huge turnovers due to a, a muff kick, and then, a, and then another muff comes back to bite Etiwanda. Tough, tough, tough series of events. Yes, yeah, it was the onside kick that, that proved to be the difference. But there's still 20, 21 seconds oh, yeah. left in the game, and there's and, and you and anything is possible. So the extra point is up, and the extra point is good. So we're going to see what kind of kick the Bulldogs can muster up. I mean, you got to put your fastest kids in there. If they got Carl Lewis, put some shoulder pads on them and let them run the football. And with that, if you think about this, when you think about Etiwanda and their exceptional uh, kicker that they have uh, in Diego Garcia, because Oak Hill missed the extra point. Yes. So now they are up. So now they're right. up 24 right. to 27. And, so a, a field goal will tie the game. And we're seeing Diego Garcia. I mean, Diego Garcia, correct? We're seeing Mr. Garcia get his, get the leg ready to go right now. So he know he he knows what he has to do. So he's like, hey, just give me a position, fellas, and I, I'll let the thing go. Yes, indeed. So. This has been a wow. it, this has been a great game. We went to, it's homecoming night, so we had uh, the halftime went a little bit uh, longer than we expected. Well, Coach B, I tell you what, we kind of expected this because last year, Coach B, the Eagles traveled uh, up the hill to Oak Hills, and they and they they shocked them uh, by one point on their homecoming. And uh, Coach Devin said he was ready for the onslaught. And uh, yeah, and the, these Bulldogs are trying to pour it on right here, sir. So is this a do you kick the ball deep or do you do you do you muff pooch punt it or but Oak Hill is ready to kick the ball from their forty yard line so they're kicking the ball and they kicked it they oh out of, is that going to go out of bounds Coach B oh you almost let that go out of bounds so with that with eighteen so with eighteen seconds so there is another flag on the play so at eighteen seconds to go Etiwanda returns the ball up to the. 30-yard line, and it is a foul again wow. on Oak Hill. What did they call? It looked like that was a personal foul. So, 15 yards, Coach B. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah oh wow. And if and they got a t- and, and, and and these Eagles, they have a timeout, Coach B. So let's see where this ball is going to go at the 40-yard line. So I mean, Coach B, let's see here. One, two, Coach B. They need 20 yards. I'd say 25, maybe 30. Maybe th- 30 gets him in his range where he, where he was able to ca- um, um, prove he was able to do it last week. But only one, I mean. So McDonald's in the backfield. He's in the gun. He has three receivers to his right, three to his left. Nice. And he catches the ball, and that is a quick little little pitch and catch to number 15, and that's going to be, uh, for Etiwanda, that's going to be Hunter Black. Hunter. Hunter Knight Knight. He picks up about eight yards on the play, and they and the good thing about it, they only lost about four seconds. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I was concerned about, Coach B. Again, having these receivers, but again, a quarterback Tommy McDowell was able to to break the pocket and make that play happen. So McDonald is in the gun. He has one receiver, and three receivers to his left, and his running back. And again, and again, it's another. See what he did? Open. Oh, they're calling that a catch. Is that a catch? No, they're so, calling that a catch. It is a catch. Oh, so wow. With nine, with nine seconds. seconds to go. Mm, mm. With nine What a seconds catch on the go. outside right there. That's number 82, Coach B, with a great catch. Jordan Porter. Wait, wait. Nope. They're saying that's incomplete, Coach B. Yes. Yeah. So, I was going to say, yeah, that would have been a great catch. So it was an incomplete play. So nine seconds right here. It with, might with, be Hail Mary time. Well, no, it's not Hail Mary time, Coach B. You need, you, I mean, you have a timeout. 
There you go. So See? that is a quick play. Yeah. That is in the gun. You had two receivers right, two to your left, and Ty McDonald catch completes the play, and that was the number 19, Nick Cassidy. was a senior receiver, 5'11". Cassidy uh, checks in at about 160 pounds. So that moves the ball to about the 47-yard line. And what it does for them, Coach B, stops the clock, so they can now try to get a, a play over the middle. They only lost two seconds on that play. So once again, they're, they pump fake, and they are going they were going deep on that play. And number 82 might have been wide open, Coach B. Not wide open, but he was open. Yes. So that was a pump fake. So now wow. you have two Jeez. seconds to go. With Edwin, the ball is about the forty. So, hey, if I'm if I'm if I'm coach, I call timeout right here. The ball, well, it was an incomplete pass. Well, but you only have two seconds. Interesting. So, wow, last play of the game. Three receivers to your right. You're running back, and McDonald's in the backfield. So let's see what it's hail mary time, and it is going up. It is going up, and the ball That's falls do to it. the ground. It is incomplete. And Oak Hill comes into Etiwanda and wins the game 24-27. Wow. to 27. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of disappointed Etiwanda Eagles on the, on the field right now for good reason. That was a tough game. That was a tough game. Some of the highlights of the game. Wow, what a game. The, some of the highlights of the game absolutely for Oak yeah. Hill is going to be their running back, Armis Aldrich. Was was a huge, yeah was player a of the game for us, Coach B. And then you think of Michael Delgado, Michael Delgado, who was their sophomore quarterback, who stepped up and had a big game as well. Yeah, I, I, it's a coin toss uh, between those two. Because I mean, for a sophomore quarterback to come in there and lead his team back like that, Coach B, is something to be said. But the person who was consistent the whole time, Coach B, consistent was uh, was all day Aldridge. He probably clocked in about roughly about uh, 160 yards. Had over 25 yards catching. I agree. So along with so along with my Matt. co-host, I am Coach B saying so long from Etiwanda Eagles Stadium in Rancho Cucamonga, reminding you that tonight's final score was Etiwanda 24, Oak Hills 27 on homecoming night. This broadcast is a production of Etiwanda High School in association with IE Sportsnet and Fox Sports 1350 AM. It is intended, for the so, it is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use or descriptions or accounts of this game without express written consent from Etiwanda High School is prohibited. The opinions expressed on this broadcast are not necessarily those of Fox Sports 1350 or Etiwanda High School. You are tuned into the new home for IE Sportsnet every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. with Coach B. Andy Turner, when it comes to Inland Empire Sports, the conversation starts and stops here. On Fox Sports Radio 1350 a.m., IE Sportsnet every Saturday morning, 8 a.m.